Yes, team, Alan Brazil, what a guest. A guy I've been trying to get on the podcast since it started and he does not disappoint. Never seen a guy drink white wine like this in my life. Uh, as ever, if you could subscribe, like and comment on the video, it helps us massively trying to get other massive names on the podcast. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Yes, we're here with an absolute idol, Alan Brazil. How you doing, mate? All right? Very well, very good, thank you. You came a long way, mate, didn't you? Glasgow to this? Uh, well, I, I keep looking down and think it's the Clyde, but it's not, is it? No, is it fucking Clyde? <laughs> I was going to say, mate, this is a Shard, isn't it? Is that right? We're in the Shard. We're in the Shangri-La Hotel Shard. There's a bar right at the top, and there's a couple of great restaurants here. Brilliant. And Talk Sports right next door. All right, so you just jump into here? Aye. Uh -huh. Well, I've been in the toilet, heated seats. Oh, was it? Arse on a heated seat. In Glasgow, you get piss out of the toilet seat. <laughs> Completely different to what you get here. And that's in the women's toilets, by the way. I take it we can say what we like here, huh? is that right? Uh, it's a free for all, huh? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I need to say, mate, this is a bucket list moment for me. Brilliant, thank Parler, you. Parler, I had a pint with Parler. We've done him, he's been on here. Hero, you were the other Parler. one. Parler. Well, he's in uh, he's in Portugal at the moment. See, no, he's done a Cobra oh, bomb on the beach. And he's, he's dived into the. He's, he's had a pint and a shot. And he's dived into the Atlantic, but it's like a Baltic this time of the year. Mm -hmm. It's freezing. Mm -hmm. They've got that storm coming over from Florida, America, and all that. Oh, he's off his head. Amazing. Uh, you, is he your favourite drinking partner? Um, we, we tend to, if I go out with anyone, yeah, because Gabby's a lightweight, a bon or Ali says we'll see you in 10 minutes at the bar, never shows up. He'll have the odd couple of pints, but that's it. He's always got an excuse. Uh -huh. I'll just make a few calls. Incredible. Now, on the podcast, I'll, we're going to talk about your career, but we did a thing called Pet Peeves. Gary and Evelyn, that's copied it on Overlap now. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, no. What's yours in, in life? Things that really annoy you? Annoy me? I think I'm really annoyed at the moment, the way the world's going and the way people are behaving, to be honest. I'm not political, but you put the telly on, it's all doom and gloom, isn't it? It's mud uh. And I, I have to tell you, all this woke bollocks. I'm not having it. <laughs> I'm not having it. It's an absolute... Low. What are they teaching kids in college and uni now? Pish, that's what they're teaching them. <laughs> it's an absolute joke. And I think they're a bunch of lazy bastards as well. <laughs> oh, let me, here's your wine. Would you get two glasses? Well, just in case. In case <laughs> so talk, talk, talk us through a difficult day after you finish talk sport. Um, I wouldn't say a difficult day when no, I finish. No, typical. Sorry. A typical. Um, thank you. Just one. I'm in more. I'll put all of that later. To, um, no, no. So we finish at ten. Normally on a Wednesday morning, like is today, I'd drive up from Suffolk. I'd leave about twenty past three, in the morning. Right. And I would drive up, dump my car just down the river there. Billy the cab, who's been with me for twenty odd years, would bring me in, drop me to talk sport, and then I would. Um, I'd have an easy day. Or I'd go and have a drink, have a chat. We call it the debrief. Right. So we'd go over to one of the hotels, have a couple of bevies, and then go for lunch or go home, whatever. Not home, home, but to back to Canary Wharf. And what time would that usually be, usually getting it? Uh, well, it depends. Depends who I'm with. Depends how good it's going, but probably have a bevy about, I don't know, 20 past 10. Right, no but bad. Do, well, don't forget, I'm up since, you know, quarter to three. Yeah, yeah. So it's all relative. See, in the younger days, was it later than t 20 past 10? In my younger days, I was pretty good when I was 15, 16. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, I, I, then I started living life a wee bit better. You know, I was just football, football, football. And then it was a snooker hole, racing, stuff like that. Yeah. Just enjoying myself. So get, let's get this out. You live in Suffolk from Monday to Wednesday. Uh, well, I'll go home on a Friday. Normally, Friday, right. Unless I've got something on the Friday, either a dinner with Parler or a lunch. He, he gets me so many gigs to do. And uh, it's great fun when you get there. Do you know what I mean? You have a chat, you have a laugh and all that. Partners mm. raise money for charity. It's great. I did a big one in Glasgow not so long ago. Right. Big one. And that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And that was a big uh, Glasgow kids charity. It was wonderful. So anyway, if I'm not doing it on a Friday, I'll go home. But my problem is Parler will say, pop into his local, because I've got to pass it when I go home. And I'll have a couple no more, and then go home. And then it'll be one of my locals, and just chill out, dump the car, have a couple, she'll pick me up, have something to eat or a drink. And then a quiet, a quiet weekend, to be honest, back here Tuesday or Wednesday morning. What does the missus say if you, if you stay over on a Friday when you're meant to be at the road? Uh, you're a disgrace. 
basically. <laughs> she uh, she doesn't hold back. Leave her little and he's enjoying himself. Best 40 odd years, you know what I mean? She would be married, you know, if she was going to boot me out, it would have been a while ago. <laughs> do you then have a, do you have a wee night out with her at the weekend or is it always quiet? Oh, no, 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 but she, she's, a, she's a Suffolk girl. Right. And I'm very lucky, I've got a nice, I've got a beautiful garden. And if the weather's nice, we don't go anywhere. And I, I'm only sort of 15 minutes from the coast, down to Felixstowe or Woodbridge, ground a wee bit towards um, Lowestoft and places like that, you know, Southwold, Alborough. So we've got we've got a million places to go, so we're very, very lucky. A long way for governing Castlemock when you grow up. Yeah, there. but I, I still get, you know, when I go home, I still get the old prickles. And when I see my pals from school, it's just magic. Yeah. Really. I keep in touch with a lot of them. Uh, we do another thing as well your dream meal before we get into the football so you could pick a starter a main course and a dessert what would um, it be I'm, I'm pretty believe it or not I'm, I'm more I like a, I like I'm not going to say a fucking salad for starter are you no but I do like Caesar salad oh lovely uh, my favourite meal would be Sunday roast Jill cooks a brilliant Sunday roast and we don't have a, we don't have a starter but if I was going to have a starter I'd have a wee bit of pate probably and a bit uh, of roast. Roast bread, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or I like a curry now and again. You know, some I'm not. I'm a steak. I like a steak. Yeah. And she loves a steak. And in London, some crackers. There's a great bar called Goodman. It's Russian owned, and it's like Cheers Square Bar, and they're brewing. And go in there in the morning after radio. And they're still hoovering up. Like, All right, Alan, help yourself, right? Help yourself. And then they'll open about eleven, and then it's mobbed. And they do the best steak in London. Oh wow! Brilliant. So you'll sit there, get a few beers and a yeah. oh, you're living the dream, aren't you? Of course. What about a favourite day? We're only, only here for a visit. That's it. What about a favourite day with Ray Parler? Can you remember your fa- a favourite favorite day? Favourite day? Well, there's a few. Uh, once uh, I got him right on it. And um, it wasn't long after he'd done his first couple of talk sports. And I said, you coming out? He went, no, no, no. She's told me I'm not allowed out here. I said, well, you're not allowed. He said, last time I fell through, I said, come on. <laughs> anyway, we had a few. In the city, in the, to be, to, the city is just over there. So we are South Bank. That's the city of London there. So I took him over there and we had a few. And there's, we went to Goodman, the steakhouse, and then there's the Ned. And we came out of the Ned. We ended up somehow back in Canary Wharf. And there's a famous restaurant there, Boysdale, owned by a Ronald McDonald, McDonald, the clan of the McDonald's. Right. And it's uh, famous for cigars and whiskey and steaks uh, and seafood, oysters and stuff. We ended up in there, but that didn't last long. We were politely told, come on, guys, we've got diners coming in soon. <laughs> and we ended up, my other favourite, Waitrose Wine Bar. Oh, but they well, got a wine bar down here, have they? Eh? Oh, we, Waitrose is brilliant. There was three. Now they've cut it back to two. They had to have bouncers in to get the women out from the offices upstairs. <laughs> they want to stay all night. Out, out, you got home, you got And me and Parler ended up there. And he was running around with a, a baguette, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. And he ended up, he got the train home and he was filmed on the train, fast asleep, holding on to the pole. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, I'm, I'm all right. He went, I'm never going out with you again. again. And he's a drinker as well, so that tells you how much oh, he's can improved. Drink. He's improved. He's, he's, he's upped his game. So uh, is it usually white wine at this time and during the day? Uh, maybe. No, it used to be a beer. I used to love a Peroni, but I'm sort of going off beer at the moment. I've, I'll have a, I'm, I'm down in Newmarket next couple of days, so I'll have a little glass of bubbly down there. Champagne. Uh, I'll tell you a story, right? right. I'm involved with a stud. And uh, they're just outside Newmarket. And they've, there's 1,250 acres. And the guy's a massive Spurs fan. So Aussie Adelas is involved. Glenn Hoddle's involved. And it's, it's some operation, trust me. It's called Newsels Park. Right. And uh, we sold, obviously the breed, we sold a filly two days ago at the sales because it's the big sales at the moment and Kia Yurabachi the football agent yeah Tevez is one it was Tevez yeah, yeah correct he's got a company called Ammo Racing and one of our fillies went through the ring and seriously we were expecting 750 maybe a wee bit more he paid 4.4 million guineas for this filly no way he did and then about f- 10 minutes later he bought another one for 2.5 two million so that just shows you. And how much do you get out of that? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, uh, this is for the stud. I'm part of the racing syndicate. So right. I, I introduce nice people to the racing syndicate. And the, I could be involved in the breeding, but she won't let me. You do enough breeding at the weekend when you got broad in it? I'd <laughs> like to put a lot of money in. She won't let me, so I've missed out. Uh, I, 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 still, it's magic. It's got a vineyard amazing. as well. It's brilliant. Oh, I, like it. I, I love it. I do love a wine. When, so did, the, the when did the love a wine first come? Uh, when I went to... Wouldn't be here... Because I finished when I was 27. 
That's your plan to earn. And we uh, 27, we finished. And um, and I went, ended up going to Australia, tried a little bit of the old Barossa Valley there, Penfolds and stuff like that. Uh, and then came home, came back to London, tried to get a decent job, um, which was really interesting because I was speaking today to Johnny Sexton, the Irish legend, yeah. rugby. Uh-huh. He's got a normal five, five day a week job now. Does he? Because they didn't make the money. So I had to do that. Right. And then I got, I was in a bar one night and I got invited by an Australian guy and he said, would you like to come out of Australia and play football for us just for a few weeks? I went, yeah, I was just being polite. And I'd had a few bevies. And I'm, I'm I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to waste the guy's time. I don't want to piss him off. I said, yeah, lovely. No problem. Give me your number. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And I couldn't believe it. The following week, I'm lying in bed about three in the morning and the phone goes, Alan, great news, Harry Michaels, right? And this guy, Harry Michaels, was a bit of an entrepreneur in Sydney. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, Oz Aerobics. He has all these beautiful girls doing aerobics by the Harbour Bridge, by the Opera House. I've watched it with the shorts yeah, that well, I'll tell you about it in a minute, right? That was the one I watched there. And this was a guy <laughs> who owned it all. I said before I knew it, me, the wife, and two of my kids at the time, out to uh, Australia, and we the flipping... I, I went for four weeks, three games. I ended up playing four games, never lost. Came back. A week later, centre-forward b- broke his leg. Back out my own for six weeks. Oh, what a time that was, by the way. Yeah. Racing every day, you know, no hassle. Getting in when I wanted, train when I wanted. That was magic. And I went over there and I played in the opening game of the Sydney soccer game stadium. Sydney Olympic against Wollongong. I'm playing for Wollongong. And um, we won 1-0 and I scored. I was breathing out my arse all the <laughs> second half. Because I'd been on the plane... It was Malaysian Airways, right? You know, they lost that plane. And uh, every time you stopped or took off, right, would you like a glass of champagne? I'm thinking it's Thursday. We're playing Saturday, five o'clock. We're playing Sydney Olympic. Be careful. I'm going to have to stop bevying somewhere. <laughs> well, I stopped in Perth because <laughs> my brother was there. And I went, right, you all right? What are you doing? I said, where are you? So I'm at Perth Airport. Anyway, got a, we got to Sydney and the, he's got a camera crew there. Al- Alan, are you okay? I went. <laughs> He said, you look terrible. I said, I'm never flying fucking MAS Airlines again. I need my bed for a couple of hours. And we scored, I scored 1-0 and we won. Unbelievable. So how long was it between stop drinking and playing the game? Uh, about six hours. <laughs> and then he wanted to take me out in Sydney on weekend because he had a 10 grand bet with the, the Greeks in Sydney. He was a Cypriot. I'm like, I just want my bed. No, 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 you're coming out with me. Oh, God. Mate, you could be my favourite guy of all time. So I came home. We won four, drew two. And then something else happened. I ended up going back for another six. We ended up winning the league. Oh, but anyway, anyway, come back. Trevor Francis came out. God bless, he's gone now. And he came back and someone in Switzerland phoned them up. He said, I'm looking for a centre forward. Anyone. He says, well, it was not League A with Grasshoppers and Zurich, Sion. It was Group B. So it was like the first of it, second division. And he said, Alan Brazil, just been in Australia. He'll do you a great turn. So I ended up in, Australia, I ended up in Switzerland for a year. Taught my kids to ski and they end up skiing for Scotland and England. Slalom, giant slalom. Really? Is that what your kids done? Yeah. Incredible. Uh, other football players that I wanted to speak to you about first, Jamie O'Hara, he's a pet peeve of mine. Tube. There's Absolute no way tube. he came out with you and ordered a pina colada. He did. What yeah. a dick. He's a strange one. The, the story goes by <laughs> the way. Listen, I love him a bit. He's a great guy, I have. But he's, Ugly he's, as he's after my chair at the breakfast. Don't worry about that. No, nah, but he's never getting that, mate. He's after my chair. So a funny story is it was a Billericay town and there was a guy, he was a steel magnet, putting all the money in, there's a lot of ex-league players playing and Jamie was a player manager. And Parler was at the game, Ray Parler. Uh-huh. And uh, the owner's mate on the board said, uh, what do you make the team, Ray? He went, I don't know. He said, but who's that fat guy in midfield? I said, he said, oh, he can pass the ball. He said, he can pass the ball, he can't run. And that was Jamie. <laughs> and to this day, Jamie thinks he got in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> what about other famous names outside the football that you've been on days out with? I've read something about Eddie Jordan. You're good oh, Eddie's good. I was out with him in Coulthard a while, a while back, a few weeks ago, doing a podcast. They do their own. Uh, what else? Uh, I've had some crackers. I remember flying to Dublin, private jet for the rugby, with um, Delalio and a guy called Michael Spencer, who's a big man in Canadian War Financial. Right. In fact, he's in the city now, I think it's called ICAP. He was chairman of the Tory party, I think. Anyway, he invites us over, and my job was to host some of these big hitter guests, okay? And uh, Jason Leonard was there as well. And we got on the plane, it was, I'll never forget it, private jet. Not the first one I've been on, but this was a beauty. And out come the vodka, which I don't drink, really. And uh, canopy, 
little ca- little canopy things and out come the caviar. Oh, I thought this will do me. <laughs> we got a Dublin private limo, Sherbourne Hotel. And I, I just took these guys out and there was people. And these are these big, these are big people in industry. I got them out in the Guinness. They were falling over tables, <laughs> falling over people and all that. And on the way back, he said to me, what the hell have you done to my friend? <laughs> <laughs> so he told me to look after them. That's all I've done. That was amazing. Magic. But uh, we had a great time over there. Any musicians? Um, oh, God, yeah. No Gallagher, is he? Is he uh, no, Noel's a good guy. I normally see him at the football at Arsenal. Uh, Noel's good as gold. Of course, I went to school with Jim Kerr, Charlie Burchill, some oh, wow. They're great lads. A funny, funny school I went to, Holyrood, in Govan Hill. Right. So Jim and Charlie were in my class. So was uh, Jerry McElhone, who's the manager of Texas. Oh wow! And his his brother, younger brother, plays is it Basie plays, uh, and then the boy from Travis, Frank Ely, yeah, yeah, he was Hollywood. Well, so know. was Frankie Boyle. You'd be amazed. Geniuses, there's you'd geniuses. Be, you'd be amazed. Yeah. It was a big school, by the way. There was about forty four, forty five in a class. Uh, before we're going to go into your younger life, but just before we do, McCoy's obviously is massive. Oh, he's great. Scotland. How's uh, he for a day or two? Did you say what is he two pints and he's off? Uh, he's 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 careful now. Why is that? Well, he's got a living jobs. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, so, he does a uh, game every fucking night, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, Ali, we got on great. And I mean, I played against him, believe it or not. Sunderland Ipswich. They said this young kid from from Glasgow. I wind him up. See, you're not from Glasgow. You're from He's East from Bride. Bride. Uh, it's, uh, it's not Glasgow. I is. I is. Anyway, and uh, ever since then, I've got to know him. And uh, good as gold. Great guy. Great Have you guy. had a particular date with him you've enjoyed? One I can't mention, but the other was, uh, <laughs> we've had a few in London. No, no, I'll have a few. Yeah. He keeps inviting me up to his home by the loch. Is it loch well, it's beautiful, doesn't it? And I've got to go. I've yeah. got to go. He's got the deer in like, his back garden, doesn't he? Ah, well, I've got a wee bit of that in Suffolk as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Is uh, it your idea to bring him on the, the show? I said it would get him, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but it'd be, how can I say this? I'd like to do more well, like. But he's so busy, and yeah. you know, and they they want me doing three days, and Ali doing two. They don't they don't want us to keep us together, if you know what I mean. Right? Why not? Because who's going to do the other days? Right. Do you miss doing the five days? I do, but you know I'm at a little heart scare. So, I've just, but so many footballers have you wouldn't believe how many have. What heart scares? Oh, for uh-huh. God's sake! Terrible. You be you, you know the. I don't mind talking. I don't think yours has got anything to do with football. Though. I think it's the drinking five days uh, no, a week. No, no, they said on. that you were so fit when you're in your youth. No, <laughs> uh, no, I was born with a little defect, and it just gradually got worse. But anyway, I had an ablation. And I watched them do it, um, but I was in a hospital, a local hospital in Suffolk. I won't say what one. They couldn't find anything wrong. I was in there for a week. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, is a doctor. She said, "Dad, this is not right. I'm getting the paramedics." I said, "Don't be stupid. I'll drive to the hospital. I'll go." She went, "No, no, no." They come to get the ambulance right away. Couldn't find a thing. And I went, a week later, I went, there's something wrong. So I spoke to a friend of mine in the city, took me to uh, Bart's Hospital, which is brilliant. The surgeon, the boss there, heart specialist, Glasgow. Right? Glasgow. Great guy. And he says, son, you got a problem. He said, uh, I want you to stay overnight and we're going to operate. I went, what? Yeah, open heart surgery. Well, uh, not open heart surgery, it's called an ablation. And they put the drill, uh, they go in here, and they go into your chamber, drill through and blast it and um, ice it and then restart it and it brings back your... And they said, do you want knocked out? I said, no, can I watch it? He went, you can. I went, I'll watch it. I lay him aside and I watched him do it. It was unbelievable. You watched somebody going into yeah, your stomach yeah, and yeah, your yeah, heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you enjoyed that? And then two days later, um, he said, you've got to change your lifestyle, right? I went, yeah, of course I will. And then two days later, he said, look, if you, we've got a lovely garden here if you want. I've got all the wires on and all that. He said, if you want to have a little wander the garden, but St. Bart's is right in the city where my favourite Italian is and my favourite wine bar. So I walked down Cheapside between Banks and St. Paul's all wired up. People were going, what the fuck? <laughs> right? And I came back about three hours later. I didn't have a drink, but came back three hours later. Well, fuck it. Where have you been? We've been looking everywhere. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I've got a lot of friends. Get back in your room. Anyway, uh, so touch wood. I'm, I'm all right. You're looking great, mate. No, I'm fine. Ah, yeah, you're looking great. No, I had four months, four months being good, no bevy, just water. Then one day I woke up, bored out of my life. Uh, I, I, need, I need a pint. And that was it. So, but I've, I've cut down. Good for you, mate. All uh, right, we're going to go back right to the start. Glasgow boy, as we said, came through at Celtic. 
grew up in Govan, then Castlemilk, and then Sims Hill, you said, what was football for like you as a kid going to watch oh, it like your dad, you said? We did, well, I was at St Mirren's Primary. We didn't, we, 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 there was no football pitch, so you played with a tennis ball. And to this day, I think that helped. Control, technique and stuff like that with a tennis ball. Brilliant. Played for the local team, then went to Holyrood, which was again, the, yeah, yeah, we played, we, you know, football, athletics was the only thing you could do. And uh, great, loved, I loved every bit of it. But you know what it's like up the road, you're one or the other, you're Catholic, Protestant. I live right next to a brand new uh, secondary school, but it was Protestant. And a lot of my, my pals who, I, you know, hung about, we all yeah. went there and I had to get walked down or get the bus down to Govan Hill. So um, there were great days. We overlooked Hamden as well, so we'd all meet for the, the cup finals. And of course, you heard a roar, and it was a muffled roar, it was a cellar end, yeah. Hams in the air. You heard a, a, a louder roar because of the roof and the dust. It was the Rangers, you know. So right from day one, I was a kid, I was hooked on it. On Celtic, yeah. My brother, older brother, seven-year-old, would go everywhere, watch Celtic, home and away. And I started going home and away. And you stood in the jungle? Yeah. I went to Brockville once when the wall collapsed, and I went to Ibrox when um, the disaster was there. And I also went to, uh, where did I go? Dundee one night. Some stupid driver, a cup or something, midweek. And it all kicked off. I nearly got battered. And Who got, was that with your brother? No, no, no. Just being there. And I thought, I'll keep away from the mob. And I got chased for my life, you know. And I got on the train and all my mates from school were like, where were you? Did they get you? I went, no, no, no. You been was. It was magic. I'm like, all right. So I, I used to go everywhere. I got on supporters buses and all that. Fantastic. And you've been pushed on in the jungle, you told us. Well, that was fo- that was uh, football for it. Yeah. Sell it in Hamden, that was worse. Uh-huh. Never wear a duffel coat at the games like that when it's packed. Pushing in your pocket. Oh, murder. <laughs> What's that warm feeling? Oh, you dirty. <laughs> uh, I, I was at Selic Leeds, you know, 134, oh, the, Was that a semi final? Oh, I'll never forget it. Who did you mate, go that way? Your dad? No, my mate lived behind the cellar end. Right. Curling Crescent. And he had a ladder. We climbed over the ladder, sneaked in, hid till the gates opened. And they watched the game. What? I'll never forget that. As no long, way. Sorry. What a night that was. Is that your idols, the Lisbon Lions? Were they your idols? Oh, I had to be, yeah. What ones did you, what ones you found? Oh, we Jimmy was brilliant, wasn't he? Bobby Lennox was brilliant. Bobby Lennox, fantastic. His record was amazing. Mm, goal scoring ahead. Oh, and uh, well, they were all Big Billy, you know, they, they were all great. Tommy Gamble, you know, fantastic. And uh, you eventually got Pally with a few of them? Oh, absolutely, yes. Who, Bertie? Bertie I've got to know all the Lisbon Lions. I went to the big dinner on Park Lane. Um, it was in the was it the Grosvenor or the Savoy no it was the Grosvenor I think there was a Dorchester and the Grosvenor the two big ones and they decided to have a big thank you to the Lisbon Lions where it was sensational Simple Minds played and um, it was like a scene from Braveheart I, 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 we got there and the guy said to me Alan you better come in here have a drink don't go to the hotel yet why? he says you'll see what I mean in a minute so we sneaked into the Dorchester now, the, the guy behind the bar, I know very well. He's got, he's, he got in the, I went, I, he says, it's bedlam up there. Inside was like a jungle. Outside was <laughs> people, kilts up, everything hanging out, <laughs> hammered, lying in, lying in the side of the street. And all these people coming back from, you know, the bank and all that Mayfair are like, oh my God, what's going on? Not here. Oh, <laughs> Incredible. What a, what a night that was. So then you were at Celtic as a kid? Boys club. Boys club, yeah. Yeah, and um, it was it was interesting because... I was a sort of left footer in more senses than one, but left foot, full back, midfield player. But my last season, they put me up front and I scored 62. But they had so many people signed for Celtic at the time yeah. that I got away. There was a wee guy, I never forget him, George Finlay. I think he's gone now, God bless. But he was there with his duffel coat. No one pissing in his pocket, but he was there <laughs> with a the duffel coat. He was pissing in the rain. He'd come to all our home games at Battlefield. And eventually he said, son, uh, you tied to any club? I went, no. He said, I'm, I'm an Ipswich scout. I've been watching you for a few months. I'd love you to come and try. Would you like that? I went, aye. Where is it? I had no idea where Ipswich uh, was. Miles away. Some old man was there. He had a chat. He went, well, let me think about it. And then I always remember there was a guy from Clyde Bank. The owner of Clyde Bank came over and asked. And uh, was it Steedman off the top of my head? Jack Steedman might have been. Anyway, I was going to Ipswich. And uh, put me on a train and away I went. In fact, someone says it was Davy Moyes. That his dad, I'm sure, was a dad, coach or a scout, wasn't he it? He put me on the train. I don't remember, but I think... Anyway, I got there, I loved it. It was tiny compared to Glasgow. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of Scots there as well. Johnny Work was there, George Burley was there. 
What a player, John Walker. Oh, and what and Georgie was a great player, but and he's he's ill at the moment, but he's fighting it. Uh, Walker, I see all the time. What were you like when you first moved in there? Was it wild? Fifteen away from home? No, no, not really. No, no, no. I was uh, one of the boys, but um, <laughs> excuse me, I was one of the lads, but I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wasn't really massively drinking or anything. But we'd go out because you yeah. were in digs. So you'd an old grumpy landlady as you come down the stairs, go easy on my stairs, you're wearing my carpet out and all that bollocks, you know. <laughs> it was horrible and the food was crap. I'd done the exact same in Glasgow, but I've done the digs in Glasgow, old ah. woman used to block her toilet every day. Loved them, honestly. And to, uh, the legend Bobby Robson was the manager, can you remember the first time you met him? Uh, yeah, because he come, he, it's, it's totally different now because he ran the football club from top to bottom. He'd watch all the trials. He'd try and watch youth team games at home because we used to play outside Portman Road. Uh, it's where the academies are now, but that was our pitch. We play the South East Counties there. Right. And that was a great league, by the way. I mean, you had Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea, you had all the London clubs. You had Pompey, you had Southampton, Norwich, West Ham. You had them all. And that was a big, big test. Two years to make it. And I I'd, I'd, uh, had a brilliant month, one month. Four games. I scored 16. Four, 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 four. Wow. So Bobby just says, keep it going, son. You've got a bright future. And then you sign your first year pro, and then your reserves, then you're knocking on the door. And then when you get in the first team, you've got to try and take it. Yeah, was he a, was he a gentleman, Bobby Robson? A gentleman, but he could also kick you up the arse. Even as a young boy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, why would he kick you up, Mars? For what well, reason? I was caught out on a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, said I, was, Thursday? I said I was good, but I wasn't that good. <laughs> and you also went to America on loan, Detroit Express. Oh, How was, the hell that came well, about? Well, he, he basically said to me one day, I'll tell you what it was. 1978, that was a great trip. That was a great trip. I was single at the time, but it was a great trip. And um, he said to me a couple of weeks before, he says, we're in the cup final, son. There's only one sub and you're pushing, but it may be too early. What I want you to do is after the cup final, I'm sending you to America. I went, what? He says, I need you to find a yard of pace. It's the only thing that's going to stop you. He says, nothing wrong with my pace. Well, I need you quicker. He says, you're going to America, right? So the Saturday morning, they named the team, and there's only one sub, and Eric Gates, who was my mate, great player, great finisher. Cut a long story short, we win the cup final. Roger Osborne, local boy, scores a goal. In fact, the guy who was taking my position, a guy called Dave Geddes, who went from Ipswich to Villa, he was the one that I had to get ahead of. He made the goal and it played really well. Carlisle ball, crossed the ball, Willie Young, big Willie Young knocked out, Roger Osborne, local boy, knocked it in. And he was, he couldn't believe what happened to him. They take, I had to take him off. So the next morning, six o'clock, I'm flying out of New York, uh, Heathrow to New York. And we're in the Kensington Royal Gardens Hotel in Knightsbridge, London. And I looked at Gatesy and we'd, we'd been out for a walk Saturday morning. But he says, come on, let's have a bet. And we go in for the Hackney Morning Dogs and the bookies. And it was like one of them, oh, smoke and all that, you know. Uh-huh. This is before the cup final. Uh-huh. So anyway, I've done my door. <laughs> and I'm going to America the next morning. So Saturday night we're all a bit pissed and all that. And I said, "Gates, because we're celebrating. We've won the, uh, we've won the FA Cup." And um, I said, "Gates, I'm going to America." And I said, "No, you told me." I said, "I've no money." He says, "And?" I says, "Well, lend me some." And he reached in his pocket, never forget it, and he gave me forty quid. He says, "All I've got." I says, "You saved my life." So bang, I'm at Heathrow. Get on the plane. I've got forty quid on me. Get to the other end. Giant, uh, we're, we're playing at the Giant Stadium. Wow. Land at JFK. No one to meet me. I'm like, what am I going to do? Right? What am I going to do? No one to meet me. So the BA there said, you playing in the soccer game? Whoa, we can get you a chopper there. And I'm like, I rustle in my pocket, fucking 40 quid. I'm like, <laughs> I'm scared of helicopters. No, no, get me a yellow cab. Uh-huh. So anyway, we lose one nil. It was a guy called Chinaglia scored. Giorgio Chinaglia scored. Anyway, we fly back. The reason why I remember this, we fly back from JFK to Detroit. There's a little Brazilian guy there from Rio, Roberto. He said, yeah, how are you, Roberto? Da, 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 da. He says, where are you staying? I told him, he said, oh, it's with me. We'll go for a drink tonight. I'll tell you all about, you know, the club. I went, yeah, yeah lovely. And that, our actual stadium was the, giant, uh, was, um, the Silver Dome with the... The um, Detroit Lions play. Magnificent it was. Right. Anyway, we go out that night, we go to the Three Faces nightclub. Right? And I've still got I've still got my forty quid on me. And then we go and it was like 
it was like a scene from Saturday Night Fever. As all the boys come in this little provincial nightclub, the, the old dance floor was gone, they'd given it all that, and everyone knew each other. Oh, I'm like, this will do for me. So I had a brilliant time. Went all over America, forced my way into the team, played in Boston, Seattle, San Diego, Houston, Dallas, you name it, I played there. And uh, we got a few quid, by the way. I couldn't drive at the time, so they got me a hooky driving test. And I had an orange gremlin, which is like a mini over there. Shit, but anyway, it worked. Uh. And uh, anyway, it was brilliant. And I'll never forget. We play, I think it was the semi-final of the playoffs or the quarter-final. We play Fort Lauderdale Strikers. George Best is playing for Lauderdale. Wow. Right? So I score, they equalise, Bessie gets a winner. So we're out. Trevor Francis was playing. Right. So we go up to the, the lounge, we're having a drink. Bessie comes over, I'm like, fuck it. He said, son, you got a great left foot. Who are you? Don't know you. So I got chatting with George, a few glasses of wine. Amazing. Magic, right? So anyway, we, we go out that night, and the next night's the last night we have a barbecue. And all the American guys my age, 18, 19, were a bit pissed off because they weren't getting a chance. Right? And we had a lot of... Our goalkeeper just died the other week, a guy called Steve Hardwick played for Newcastle and Oxford. Um, Eddie Colhoun played for Sheffield United, Steve Sargent, Everton, all these players, Graham Bradley. Um, and we had an absolute ball. So we're at the, the barbecue, and Trevor, Trevor really looked after himself, Trevor Francis. Francis, hey. So he's on the soda waters and all that, and I'm like schlitz and <laughs> bud with the boys. And all of a sudden, this is terrible, because I, I don't smoke at all. Right? Yeah. Never have. All the boys are in this. They get this bag of weed out, and they're like, here we go. <laughs> Lighting up big fat ones and all that. And do you know what? I went, what is it? Oh, do you good? I went, nah, I don't smoke. Oh, come on. So I have a few of them, right? Trevor comes over and gives me such a bollocking. Anyway, it's time to go. I'm never going to see them again. I hug them all that. I get in my car. Next thing, it's Starsky and Hutch. Woo, 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 woo. Boom. You're I'm, stoned. I'm over the bonnet. I'm handcuffed. I says, a problem, officer? He says, you're going up the highway the wrong side of the road. All right. He said, what's your name? What are you doing here? Because I was leaving the next morning, they fucking took me home. <laughs> I did that. Honestly, I woke up, my head, I've never had a head like it in my uh -huh. life. I mean it. So I'm on the plane going home, Wayne Davis, Steve Hardwick, and there was delays, and, we're, and we eventually get Heathrow, and we're circling Heathrow, and um, looking for a landing slot, and they're arguing about it. See, you tight arse. He's got $38,000, right? Uh-huh. And he's going to buy uh, his mum a car and he's going to have an ex a kitchen extension. Ian Davis, the, Nor the Norwich City guy, Welsh guy, I've got 36,000, but I, I, I'm sure I went out with more of you. Da -da -da. What are you going to do? I'm going to do this. I'll, I'll buy a new car, I'll upgrade this. I'll, and the bank, they nod, uh, there was three in a, a row and they, well, all right, so, uh, yeah, well, I can, I'll keep your voice down my head. <laughs> so, how have you done? I went, what do you mean, how have I done? How have you done money wise? You know, he's got 38, I've got 36. What you got? I went, money. I could put my hand in my pocket. I had 80 bucks. And in those days, it was two to one. So Gates is 40 quid back. <laughs> <laughs> we got home. Oh, dear. I missed two planes as well on the trip. I'd yeah, just gone out and missing the planes. Just a couple of questions on that. With George Best, was he gorgeous? How was he? Wearing? Oh, no, he looked magnificent. Did he? Were you, magnificent. Good were you a good looking boy back then? Not really. No. No, no. But would you get his cast offs? Uh, I. I he was a bit older than me, you know. Was he I, right? did, I did have my, uh, you know, I had my levels. I had my levels. Uh, but um, is anyway, he a top man to George Best? Oh, I've got, I got you know. I I done Sky one, didn't I? When when, how can I say it? When Sky was good, when the panel were good, and I'm not having to go there. It's just different now. No, it's past. You can see fucking it. woke crap, right? <laughs> woke crap. But I was on there with Rodney, Bestie, Frank McClintock, oh, Phil Thompson. For, uh, you know what I mean, it was magic. Yeah. So we we go to the rugby club after and have a few, and he was he was a lovely guy to have a drink with. Yeah, he was. Anyway, I got back to go just to finish the story. Sorry, mate, huh? Got back to uh, from America, and uh, Bobby says, "I hear you done all right." I went, oh, "Thank you." I was waiting for the fucking hell. Did you miss a couple of planes? And uh, anyway, nothing was said, and I got in the first team. Yeah, straight in the yeah. first team after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you did play with the Ipswich team. It was during probably the most uh, iconic era. But was we were, they say that's the best Ipswich? And by the way, Ipswich won it in sixty one, sixty two. But they say ours was the best living. How close were you to win the league? Uh, second twice. 
and in Europe every year. And in the way the format is now, we'd have been Champions League every year. Wow. That was some team, promise you. And what was that? Didn't the players was a big part of Bobby Robson as well? A bit of everything. With the, the right blend, the right balance, the right system, with two Dutch guys who were great. They just same Dutch guys, eh? Oh, but Arno Muir and Franz Tyson on freeze. They were two great players. Gatesy in the hole, me and Mariner, God bless, he's gone. Uh, Kevin O'Callaghan, Russell Osmond, Terry Butch, before that was Alan Hunter, and Kevin Beatty, who was awesome. It was George Bully McMills, I saw McMills the other day. He was our captain. No, we we a living for a living. We beat Man United six 0 one day. Wow! And you said he got us and beat them four 0 Wow! And you played both legs of the UEFA Cup final yeah, nineteen eighty one. What was like? That? What was that like to be part of? We were knackered, by the way. Why? Because we Shagging. played seventy games. Oh, seventy games! Uh -huh. Yeah, and we had no squad. Oh no! That was, was it the same eleven most weeks? Oh yeah. Wow! And you see these modern day football players more than about. Yeah, and what, do you, a, what do you think when you see got, that? They've got a squad of forty, and they're on three hundred grand a week. Yeah, I'm really fucking sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember uh, Bobby Robson run? Can you remember? Did, did you ever get it from him? Oh God, yeah, 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 yeah. He dropped me once. I went what? Because I'd I'd been playing so well, and I was playing my injury. I'd uh, if that's your foot, your left foot. I had a growth on the nerve there. So every time I put my foot down, it was like standing an electric wire. It was like fucking hell. So in the end, I used to put up with it and then I had to be jabbed. Two minutes to three, bosh. Half time, bosh. Full time, get ice on that. But oh, the next day was murder. Anyway, the growth grows. I had to have it out. And he said, I've got you in. He said, da da da. -da. Anyway, I go in, I have it out. And um, the sergeant said, Well, thank God for that. That was getting, not, that was horrible. He says, Go back, take it easy. But I, I'm, I'm a quick yeah. responder. Yeah. I always remember playing on a Tuesday night, I think it was. It was pouring a rain. And Bobby had said on the Monday, and the Friday and the Monday, he said, wow, I can't believe it. Your sharpness, you've not lost anything. Brilliant, son. Really tight. And then Monday, even more. Big game on the Tuesday. He said, hey, he said, you're looking fantastic. He says, well done. I appreciate what you've done. You put up with that pain. Now, you know, it's going to be great. Get back to it. It went lovely. So I get down there, get my number 10 shirt on, I'm changing my studs, long studs. I don't think they do that yeah. anymore now, they're changing their own studs. I fucking did. Yeah. And we're changing the studs. And uh, and I thought, where is everyone? And Baller Council was a team meeting. And I don't know why, but I wasn't in it. And they all come in one by one, and they're all like uh, looking at me, sitting on the floor, changing my studs with my 10 on and laughing. I'm like, it's a bit strange, right? So there's Gates, he was my mate, Paul Cooper, the goalie, my mate. He said, all right there, you got the wrong shirt on. I went, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> He said, I'll bet you 50 quid you have. I went, yeah, you're on. Coop, you want 50? Yeah, I'll have 50. But four of them said, I'll have 50 quid, 50 quid, 50 quid. But I thought, Bobby said, anyway, in they come. They won on the Saturday. He said, right. And Bobby came in and looked, and he fucking laughed. <laughs> Bobby Robson laughed at me. He went, Whoa. He says, same team as Saturday, Alan, you're sub. I went, what? He says, you're sub. I said, I'm a bollocks. He said, excuse me? I'm a fuck. He says, you're sub. So he sidekicked Bobby Ferguson, who I hated. Hard man from the army. Fucking hated him. He starts having a go at me. Fucking do as you're told. Shut, shut up. Anyway, I went, I'm bollocks. I go and have a shower. Good for you, mate. So the boys are pissing themselves laughing. I go and have a shower. And he puts his head round after a couple of minutes. He said, look, we're about to go out. Are you ready? You mate, you know, have you calmed down? Get that shot on. No, fuck off. Don't you tell me, <laughs> fuck off. Right? He says, come out here. And everyone's pissing. They've got towels over there. They're pissing themselves laughing, the players. And he says, right, your last chance. You're going sub. I went, no. Said, well, fuck off then. I went, right, you're on. So I go and have a shower again. And all of a sudden, I'll never ever forget the word. He said, oi, Brazil, three weeks wages. Are you sub or not? I went, ah, give me the 12. <laughs> <laughs> I can couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'd gone through all that. I had the operation. I came out of order. Was he a genius though, huh? I think he was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did you celebrate winning the UEFA Cup? Can you remember? We were knackered. It was boiling hot in Amsterdam because it was home and away. We beat oh, you're in Amsterdam. I'll even ask you how you no, celebrated. No, 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 no. Forget <laughs> red lights. Fucking hell, no, no. <laughs> we beat them 3-0 at Portman Road, battered them, and went there. And let me tell you, they battered us. You had um, Jan Peters, who scored two for Holland against England at Wembley. Johnny Method, who went to Forest. Spellboss was a great centre-back. They had about, about seven Dutch internationals. 
and I'm not kidding you, they they oh, it was boiling Olympic Stadium and it, I, AZ was too small. We moved to uh, Amsterdam, at Olympic Stadium Amsterdam, and we took thousands of Ipswich fans. We beat them four two. It could have been six two easily for them. They could have yeah. beat us. We were on our knees, by the way, on our knees. So not even a night out in Amsterdam after no, it. No, straight up the road. Hotel bar, hotel. I'm telling you, hotel bar. And that, uh, no, no, no. We were we were wrecked, and it, we we'd blown the league to Villa. We lost the semi final of the FA Cup in Man City. The first game there was no extra time. Went sorry, the first game there was no replay. Went straight into extra time. Killed us. We lost one 0 Paul Power. And then had to go to Villa. That was a Saturday. Went back to Villa Tuesday night. League decided beat them. I scored. Gatesy scored. Beat them. And yet we still ran out of players and blew it. But at least we won the UEFA Cup. Amazing. Knackered. Knackered. Russell never... Osman played over seventy games. Mate, your memory is incredible. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> See, at that stage, was it? Were you ever on a verge of like, a massive move? Obviously, you're flying at this. Well, point a couple of people, a couple of people asked me. Um, we played Roma the following year. Someone said, "Would you like to move?" So I've got a German team and an Italian team, and the team was beginning to break up at the time. But um, my missus Jill was pregnant with Michelle, so I, I didn't want to move. Right. So I don't know. I don't know who the teams were, uh, and it made no difference. My back was knackered. Jill's ruined it, huh? Oh, your back's knackered and she's pregnant. That goes hand in hand, Oh, it? it's hard to hard <laughs> be me. Uh, Bobby Robson leaves to go to England. Were you surprised when he left or did, did could you see it coming? Nah, we, we were a sponsor by Pioneer. And the following year, after all the success, I say all the success, we won a FA Cup, a UFA Cup. Uh, compared to the big boys, it's not a lot, but for Little Lips, it was fabulous. Um, you can see the team breaking up. And Bobby took the chance, off he went. Don't blame him. And, um, you know, we all thought, well, th that's it. Well, in fact, Butch was one of the last ones to leave, I think. Right. Big Terry. And Mariner went to Arsenal. I went to Spurs. You know, it was just, it was part of the ways. Yeah. But, it was um, part of the reason that you left because Bobby Ferguson took, got the job. Correct. How, how come he was much, so much of a dick? Well, some people, George, George Burnley, people like that, would, they, they liked him, but right. I didn't like him. i tell you a story. We played Stoke away, right? <laughs> This is good. Where's that other glass of wine? Let's get a big Alan another glass. We played Stoke You're away. You're here, big man. And we're on the bus and someone said, fucking hell, can you see what price we are to beat Stoke tonight? It was pissing down. It was windy as fuck, right? Right. Thank you. Yeah, that's done. It was pouring. And they were playing Stoke. You know, we thought at the time, pub team. <laughs> they had a real good goalkeeper, Fox. Really good. And I didn't realise the guy, uh, guy at Arsenal played for them. I can't believe I played against him. Uh, Boldy, Steve Bold. He was a kid playing for them. Anyway, we were a great price, so I know it's outrageous, but we all had a bet on ourselves to yeah. beat them. Oh, you were yeah. to do that back then, weren't you? Huh? And then we were, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bobby might have had a little bet as well, actually, because he said, what's going on here? And I think he might have had a little 50. <laughs> anyway, we, it's one of them horrible nights. It's blowing a gale, pissing the rain, and we are, we're, we're not having a good time. And I knew what was coming, because every time it didn't work, I was dragged out the centre forward. And I was put on the fucking left wing. Right and I'm fucking, I'm top scorer at the time. I'm like, I'm not fucking playing out there. And I can see Ferguson barking orders at Eric Gates. Fucking, you tell your mate, get out here, play on this touchline, right? And this had been building. I had a fight with him in the gym. Uh, Why? Right. Oh, he blamed me and I told me F off. He threw a bunch of keys at me, locked the door, fucking. And uh, Bobby stopped it, right? right? Anyway, so it was, it was never working with me and him. And um, he's barking orders, and I'm like, fuck off. So Gates said, ow, ow, you've got to come out. I says, Gates, I can't hear him, and I fucking can't hear you. Leave me alone. I'm not going out there, right? I wouldn't go on the wing. I'm trying my hardest to go on the right-hand side, away from the dugouts. But then I had to go and chase a ball. Mick Mills tried a, he tried a Johan Cruyff ball without saying his left foot. And as the ball was going to the fucking dugout, I can see him edging out of the dugout, Bobby Ferguson. And as I'm getting to the ball on the touchdown, he fucking springs out to grab me. <laughs> on the bed, yeah. <laughs> the ball goes out and he's got a hold of me. I told you to fucking call, fuck off. So anyway, we draw 1-1. One, one. Oh, we've done our money. Fucking hell. Oh, uh, and we come in and it was the t we had the big, big baths at the time. And he's fucking ranting at me. This is Bobby Ferguson, not Bobby Robson. Yeah. Bobby's still worried about his 50 quid he's lost. He's fucking... <laughs> anyway, I've got my gear off. I went, fuck off. I've, I've gone, I, I get in the bath and it's getting nasty. I'm like, 
fucking shut up, fucking Jock with no brains. He's a Geordie, right? Right. And he's, he's, he's had about five layers on, and he's pulling them off. He says, that's it, fucking you me. I said, go on then, right? So I've stood up in the bath and all the boys, all the heads are like, well, you're dead, like naked. You're oh, yeah, naked. yeah, yeah. Come on then. Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> and he's fucking pulling all this gear off. And as he's getting the last bit of gear off, I'm thinking, fucking hell, is this a good idea? And Bobby suddenly bursts. That's enough, you two. That's enough. I'm like, you yeah, come on now. You're fucking getting your mate out of you. <laughs> oh, no, it was never going to work. Work uh, nah. Were you that type of player? Or would you would you argue with other players as well? Were you quite Oh, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But it was just a passion. Yeah. I wasn't nasty, I wasn't ignorant, I wasn't arrogant. I'm what, just saying, win? what have I got to go out there? I, we need a goal, I'll get one. Give me the right service, I'll get one. Yeah. What were you like, would you argue with teammates a lot as well? Or was it usually? Of course like you coaches? would, yeah. You had to. But then at the end of the game, you have a drink together and you're sorted. Yeah, it's forgotten a bit. Uh, during that time, you got a, a call up for Scotland as well, 1982 World Cup. Listen to the names of this Dalglish, Souness, Stratton, Hansen, McGrain. What was it like going into that group of players and how big was the the, the, stand, the jumping standards? It was astonishing. I've got a story. Right, right here it. we go. <laughs> this is like a dream come true for me by you. 81, 82, right? And um, I was having a good year. But we're playing, believe it or not, it was February, and we're playing um, Southampton, Laurie McManamy. And amazingly, Laurie had Shilton... Um, he had Steve Nick, uh, not Steve Nickel, Chris Nickel, the big uh, Ireland manager. Nick Holmes. He had um, Steve Williams. He had Keegan, Shannon, Alan Ball. They were top. We were fourth. Tuesday night, sixteenth of Feb. True story. Mariner's not playing. He's not fit. I'm like, fuck it now. And my missus dad had a box at the ground along the touchline. She'd finish what rush to the game, and I always remember saying that. Ah, I can't, I'm, t- I'm tired of a crap. I said, relax, have a bath, glass of wine, forget it. We're struggling, we're under strength, we may get beat tonight. So the Tuesday, my mate phones <coughs> me from Newmarket, still forget that tip in the last today. I went, what? Oh, fuck. No. <laughs> I was a bit short at the time, so I thought, I've got to back this, right? It was a good price. So anyway, I got the bookies. You meant to have a sleep in all that bollocks, <laughs> other bollocks. I got the bookies, like, fuck it, where is it? What price is this? <laughs> have a few quid on, it wins. But Stewart's Inquiry, I'm like, what? Fuck it. What? What do you mean the Stewart's Inquiry? How close is this to the game? Oh, very close. Right. This is like a five o'clock race, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Have and you this... got your Ipswich track on? No, 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 no. no, 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 no just my jeans that you go down and change right. that. And I'm like, hurry up, for God's sake. And it's gone on and on and on. Eventually, result stands. Oh, pay out, pay out, pay out. Whoosh, back to the house. And I live very close to the ground, so there's no problem. Got my boots, boom, down the ground. And uh, fucking people are going, it smells of smoke here. And I'm like, <laughs> right, anyway, we go out there. And the depleted side, well, fucking hell, it was just one of them nights. Magic. We beat them 5-2. Keegan scores, makes one, but we beat them 5-2. I score five. No way. Yeah. I scored five on Tuesday. Saturday, we go to Leeds to score, and then the following week at Everton, I score. By all accounts, Laurie McManamy phoned up Jock Steen and said, he's got to be in your squad. You've got to take him to Spain. You have to. That's what I'm told. Wow. And actually, the Wednesday morning after the five goals, there's a guy called Alistair Ross, worth the son. He said, you like your horses? I'm taking you down to Newmarket. I've arranged I went, what? Day off? He says, yeah, we're going to make the derby favourite. We're going to have a couple of pictures. You give it the five with the horses. Head. And I done it. I got a bollocking because... It wasn't arranged. The trainer was Michael Stout, who was not happy that I'm having a fucking picture in the Sun newspaper. And to this day, people say, I wish the fucking kidnapped you, Brazil. It was Shagar. <laughs> and I've got that picture with Shagar in my flat down there in the Canary Wharf. Was that the best couple of days of your career? Yes. Yes. And they got me in the Scotland team. And then who, 15- who told you that story about McMenna? Who told you it was Laurie McMenna? Someone from the club told me Ipswich. Right. So the 15th of June, my birthday, I'm in fucking Malaga Stadium kicking off with King Kenny. How good is that? Uh, Jock Steen was the manager, like you said. What was he like to work, work under? Big Jock. Big Jock was... He was... A lot of uh, people were very scared of Jock at times. Even know? like your Dalglishes and your Soonesses, would they be scared of Jock Steen? Well, I'm to Kenny in the last game. Do you remember the last game? No. He said, Kenny wasn't in the team or the squad. Uh, it, Kenny, just, I don't know what happened. I, I, I keep meaning to try and find out. But Big Jock, you know, whatever he says goes. 
you know, and you, that was it. Whatever he says goes. And um, you don't mess with him. So the 82 World Cup, just to bring in Jock Steen, uh, you had little steel in the masseur, Celtic masseur, fucking brilliant he was, brilliant. But his 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 medical room was, it was like Labrooks or Coral. There was three beds where you had the masseur, right? Steely. He'd tell you, he's a big, he used to do the masseur at the boxing matches and all, he'd tell you all these stories. We Glasgow punter, brilliant he was. He said, oh, by the way, and the racing post was on the, well, it was actually the Sport and Life at the time, was on the wall and he'd have his credit card there, his Ladbrokes or the Coral card, and the phone there. He says, anyone wants a bet, help me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are like, I'm getting injured just to fucking talk to Steely and have a bet. <laughs> who, else are, who else is big gamblers in the squad? Um, who would you have a bet with? I wouldn't say big, I don't think there was any big gamblers, but um, there was one or two would have a few bets, but yeah. not crazy. Now, uh-huh. there, was no, there was no problems in like that. So did you say you started the first game? Uh, absolutely, my birthday against New Zealand. When does he tell you that you're starting? Is it the day before? Uh, day before, I think. I'm like, fucking hell. Oh yeah, Malaga Stadium. Wow. 15th of June. I done all right, but I, I, by the way, it was 110 degrees. It was like, fucking hell. And what had happened was we went to Portugal um, to get acclimatised, but there was no bevy, there was no bread rolls, and the food was minute. After about five days, my body's going, what the fuck has happened to you? <laughs> What is where's Alan, where's Alan Brazil gone? So what did you need to eat instead? Fucking hell! Well, you, yeah, but there was you didn't get a lot. Honestly, it was oh what a shock to the system. And Jake, that affected your performance. I think I wasn't normal than what I normally. Yeah, it could have done. Uh. But anyway, look. So at half time, he said, "You're doing fine. Just keep it going, right?" But the problem was, if you remember, we lost two goals. Yeah. And we knew in that group, Russia, the USSR, and Brazil could come down to goal difference so those two goals were always a worry anyway I play an hour and he says well done come off well done I got dope tested right random me and John Robertson I couldn't have a piss for five hours I was totally dehydrated Uh right so what you just said maybe my body changed I could not it started off with water with orange juice and then they gave me a couple of beers I still (laughs) couldn't pee that's why you sat there for five hours, just so you could give me a deal. They, they let me go back to the hotel, which was miles away, and eventually they called me back next day, but it's too late, because you shouldn't have left the premises. Anyway, next game we play Brazil and Seville. I'm gutted, I'm not playing. But I, I wasn't I wasn't right, I was fucking weak. They said it's even warmer there, so you're not playing. But don't worry, don't worry, just recover, you'll be okay. And of course, Nady scores, and then they win, was it four? I can't remember, yeah. I think it was 4-1. Anyway, the final game is back to Malaga, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking all right. I'm, I'm beginning to find my form, and he's saying to me, "You're doing all right, pal. You're doing well. You're back." And I'm thinking, am I playing or not? I think he played Big Joe, and Joe scored, didn't he? Against the Russians, I'm yeah. sure he scored. But that was the USSR, so it was, and we had to beat them, and we fucking battered them, battered them. And I remember coming on, I remember heading one across score, I thought we we're going to score. And I remember whipping one left foot. He just needed a touch, it was in. And then in the corner, I think it was me and Danny, got in a bit of a mix-up and they broke away and there was a bit of a bump between uh, Willie Miller and Alan Hansen. They broke through and they, they scored. We drew 2-2, two, two, we were out. So it was all over. Uh-huh. We're on our way back from Malaga. Season over. Finished, right? We're on the bus. Uh-huh. In those days, there wasn't an auto piece, a big Mediterranean highway. You had to go through a kind of bin and, Ben, ben Alba, that's what it's called. Yeah, Ben, ben yeah, Ben, 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 Madima. Madima, that's uh-huh. what you say. Tony Molina's, Carla Honda, all that. And the season's over, and I'm at the back of the bus. <laughs> and John Robertson from Forest, he's gone. How can how do we not qualify? And we were gutted, right? I said, I don't know about you, but I'm dying for a pint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Kenny's in front of me. He said, what? I said, I'm fucking dying for a pint. Season's over. Fuck's sake. We're going home in a couple of days. Might as well. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? I said, well, I'm going to ask. I think it was Graham. It's the captain. Did I say that? Any chance, Graham? He said, well, I'll ask. He said, the season's over. Kenny's gone. Don't be stupid. Because Kenny was teetotal at the time. He'll have the odd Pims now, Kenny. Pims? Ah, Pims okay. limited in the summer, right? And he might have a Chinzano, <laughs> you know. 
Bit of a tart. Uh, fuck's but, sake. <laughs> but he, he was a non-drinker, Douglas. <laughs> so, whoa, you're mad. He says, I'll have a word. I said, you sure, boys? Aye, 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 aye. So down he goes, that's a word written. Big Jock looks up the back of the bus and I'm, I'm in that middle, like, you know. The, so he's that. looking right at you, hey? I'm looking down at my fucking shoes. <laughs> he looks right and left. People are looking out the window and all that. People are scared to fucking look at him. Uh-huh. And he, Graham comes back up. What do you say? What do you say? And I know, I know that part of the world. And we're getting close to Port of Benus. I'm like, oh, hell, hurry up. What do you say, Graham? He's going to come up and address you. I went, is he? Right? Big Jock. I went, okay, thank you, thank you. Boys, we're up, we're, yeah, we're up for it. We're up for it. Robo said, I fucking die for a fag. He loves a fag, didn't he? Oh, I need a fag and a fucking beer, please. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Big Jock gets up, comes up. And Douglas is looking at me saying, Ken, don't do it. Don't do it. Think of your career. I'm like, fuck off, Kenny. I love you, but fuck off. <laughs> and he comes up, Big Jock. He says, right. He gives us a chat how well we've done and how we've represented our clubs, our family. Fantastic. You've been great. He said, now the captain's come up and asked me that one or two of you might want to see friends and family at the, some port. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, so what I'm going to do, you've been great. I'm going to go back down, sit down. I'm going to tell the driver to pull over and let you off. He said, I find it hard to believe that after one of the most disappointing nights of your footballing career, it might not get any worse than this, that one or two of you might just need a beer. I find it hard. But, you're not letting me down. <coughs> so I'll do it, okay? He walks away, Ken. He says, see? See what I tell you? Do it, right? And I went, I'm fucking getting off. <laughs> Rob was like, I'm with you. Porky? <laughs> yeah, yeah. McLeish? Mm. So it was one of them. Uh-huh. And they were now going through Marbella, right? The other end of Marbella, the Golden Mile, heading down to Porta Benus. <laughs> and he says, right, boys. I believe we're nearly close. I'm going to pull the coach over. I'm going to look away. I promise you, I'll look away. I will not hold it against any one of you on the worst night of your life, football career, (laughs) that you need a drink to go over it. I won't hold it against you. Okay? And he looks away. And I went, what the the fuck does that mean? Does that mean? (laughs) There's two doors in the bus. Anyway, all of a sudden, never forget it. Indicate driver pulls over outside the entrance to the port of Jose Benes. First door down where Jock is, opens. With arm, <coughs> second one opens. Fucking no one's moved. Doug Leash is fucking giggling that far. <laughs> no one's moved. And I, I won't say who, but someone clearly <laughs> wanted a bit of an eye out and he sort of flinches to reach up for his toilet bag for a brush and a bit of fucking like aqua palmer, you know, a bit of <laughs> the old splash. And that movement, wow, fucking stampede. People are climbing <laughs> over each other to fucking get off the bus. There's about four left in the bus. Wow, sprint into the port. Sinatra's, yes, beers, line them up. Fucking Rod turns up. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, he turns Was up. Was he massive at the time? I'm on the bar room, Hanson, we are sailing. And <laughs> Just being put in the world cup. I, I fucking, well, I woke up four o'clock in the morning, all my gear's gone, I've got a pair of shorts and a fucking vest on, in one of them pedlo boats, like, fucking hell, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, what the fucking hell? <laughs> So it's fair to say I didn't play too many more times for Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the football. Spurs, like I said, came in for you at that time. 20 goals that season. Were you looking to get away from Ipswich at that time or was it just no, the fact that Spurs well, came Bobby in? No, Bobby Ferguson took over and the team was breaking up. And uh, But funny enough, Ron Axon was on the, the line to me a lot. Through someone else. I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. At Man United, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I ended up going to Spurs instead. I came back from a game, I forget what game. And Bobby Thug said, you got a minute? I went, oh, fuck, here we go. Another fight in the car park. He's wanting you in the bath again. Yeah, and he said, uh, big clubs come in, we've accepted the bid. And I went, um, what do you want me to do? Go to Manchester? I went, no, it's not Manchester, smart arse. It's Tottenham. I went, what? And I, the next day, Sunday, I went to see Spurs at Braintree a Hotel and um, done the deal. Simple as that. Who was the manager? Birkinshaw, Keith. Right. Played 12 games, but there's something, something wasn't quite right with me. 
And uh, I thought, and he's saying, brilliant. So we went from below halfway to UEFA Cup spot, and the following year we won the UEFA Cup. Wow. And I played in a few of the games, scored a couple of goals. So you've won the UEFA Cup twice? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, 81 and 84, yeah. Incredible, but... Yeah. Um, so, but I get, something was not right, and I played with Glenn Hoddle, our dealers, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, who else? Uh, Tony Galvin up front. Archibald. Yeah, Archibald Clements. There, there was a bit of a split in the team. Ray Clements, great guy. Chrissy Hutton and people like that. Paul Miller was my... So I played against... Graham Roberts played a, a, a lot against these guys in the youth team. Because uh, especially Roberts, Hoddle and Miller. So I knew a few of the guys. Did you uh, Did you fall in love with uh, London straight away? Yes. Because I... Uh, when I first came up, I was a little bit, well, going back to when I finished at 27, I knew there was something wrong. So believe it or not, I wasn't heartbroken. I was relieved. And basically, it's my spine. My bottom two discs are gone. S1, L5, which is sacroiliac joint, are the biggest discs. Mine are gone, worn away. So I need a fuse. I need to fuse them. But in those days, there was no scans. Yeah. It was all feeling or... X-rays, they couldn't tell you what's there and what isn't. So I was I was sort of relieved when I found out that it was all over. So I had to come to London and someone I knew said, well, okay, I'll get you a job. Your finance, go on a couple of courses, learn how to sell unit trusts and just go down, you know, companies you'll get in because of who you are. And that's why I used to do. I used to get the 623 train up from Ipswich in the morning, go to Liverpool Street and go into the city, do what I had to do. And you were a seller? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And do what I had to do. Shut and tie? Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and do what I had to do. And I'd always, uh, you know, I never put a full shift in. Yeah. I'd always, uh, there was a lovely wine bar over <laughs> there. <laughs> the bull wine vaults. Where, <laughs> but I was, I was told to mingle and talk to people. Yeah, yeah. At lunch, because in those days, everyone was lunching. And, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was all right, by the way. I sold a few. Uh, I can yeah, imagine yeah. you would. I did. And was it the same when you signed for Spurs? Was it the nightlife that you loved? Um, Spurs... I wouldn't say nightlife. I wasn't up West End or anything like that, no. Is that another Dunhing back then? Yeah, for, some, for some it was, not me. Right? No, no, no. I, I used to be local. Even at Man United, I was local. I didn't go to Manchester. So I did that when I was, you know, getting out of football, da-da-da-da, and I uh, met so many good people, you know, And but the type of guy I was, I'd get the 623 tra train up and the 630 back. It was an inner city. So I'd go to Norwich, there was a bar on the train. And that bar, even if I was at Liverpool Street Station at half three, I, I'd wait to half six. Because all my mates were in the bar, <laughs> in the pub. And it was that bad, I'd get on the train, go to Chelmsford, Colchester, Ipswich, Norwich, and go off on the way back. <laughs> train was late, yeah, another one. Someone else jumped off a bridge. That's incredible. Uh, what's the story about you forgetting about getting to do a half marathon when you were at Spurs? The Welling Garden City Half Marathon, 13.1 mile, yes. And I scored away from home. I can't remember who we played, but it came back, went to the local pub. Funny enough, where Frank Warren taught in boxing lives, or lived, Chewing Wood, Hertfordshire, beautiful part of the world. Uh, on the A1, just on the, as you got the A1 on the right, lovely part of the world. Went in the local, and that done me, honestly, it was great. And having a few, got home. Anyway, 6.30 on the door. Uh, near Wellingham City it is, right? And the wife said, oh, there's someone at the door. I said, well, oh, no, I'm not golf. No, 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 no golf today, right? And it was my mate Keith. He said, oh, oh, come on. I said, what? I'm not going. He says, no, you've got the half marathon. I went, what? Sunday morning after a game, they said, what half marathon? The Wellingham City half marathon. You've, you've, you've pledged money to charity. People have spot. You've got to do it. I went, I can't do it. You have to do it. You've got to do it. Just walk around. I went, Joe, what have we got in the house? <laughs> so there was nothing. I got a pair of shorts. She said, don't worry, they'll give you a vest when you get there. And I had a pair of blue and white Adidas Gazelle training shoes. You know the leisure shoes? Yeah, yeah. That's all I had. And you done a half marathon then? Yeah. And in the end, I was so bored, I was kicking on, flying. And I'd done a 132, a 13.1 mile. And um, I couldn't walk for about four days after it. So the money I raised for charity, I got fined two weeks' Facebook. wages. <laughs> For missing training. <laughs> when did you first hear about Because you said Ron wanted you before. Did he then phone you again when you were at Spurs? Rod. Ron Atkinson. Oh, Ron, sorry. Uh, um, 
Oh, no, he didn't. They come in. Yeah, Tottenham said you can stay. You know, I didn't have to go. And um, I was. All, I remember what happened. So we won the UEFA Cup. And uh, they then said, I was unhappy because I'm not playing regular. But it, it was. I can understand why Berkey didn't play me regular. Because, you know, I wasn't the same player. Yeah. I was still getting goals, but it, it wasn't the same. I always remember that Royal Ascot uh, were hodling the boys. Brilliant. What a day. A few days. And it had been agreed with an agent guy I had with Tottenham and Man U would go there. And I thought, I'm like, how can you turn down Man United? Yeah. And there might be a new lease of life. I might start scoring and recapture. I didn't know what was wrong. I knew there was something wrong. But I thought maybe it's just confidence. Yeah. To go there and start well. You know what I mean? Get back but, up and running ahead. If you have a look at my goal records at Spurs and United, they're not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, And I was nowhere near the player I was. What was Big, uh, what was Ron Atkinson like as a manager? Good when you're playing well, but blank you when you're not. Just completely blank you? Yeah, when you're not, yeah. And how did you find it? I thought he was a bit insecure because he was getting a bit of stick. Because when I was there at United, Everton and Liverpool were flying and we were struggling. Nowhere near like they're struggling now, by the way. But listen, I, I, Ron was my type of guy, but I'd like to have been a better player and scored more goals, but I think he could have handled it better as well. When you say he was your type of guy, why? Because he was a flamboyant guy. If you're doing well and, you know, come on, let's have a glass of wine or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. Robbo, all right, son, you've been brilliant. You know, he's one of them. Yeah, yeah. He was a man management player. But when you, when you weren't part of that, you were, uh-uh. I need to ask you about Brian Robson because what a player, eh? Is he the best you played there? One of the best. Yeah, one of the best. Hard as nails. Great, great uh, athlete. People don't realise I'd be out with him uh, and, and the rest of the lads. The next day, he's up right up the front with the So kids. he could drink like 15 pints on a Saturday and be yeah. up the front of the run on a Sunday? Easy. Easy. They guys are baffling, Easy. aren't they? Uh, of all the drinkers, Gordon was probably the biggest. McQueen? Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what could he do on a, on a night? You mentioned a figure there, just keep going. 20 pints? I'm not saying, just keep going. <laughs> but Gordon, Gordon was, uh, he was a one-off. Very, very funny guy. Any good stories about the United we were, days? We were, we were in um, a night, uh, not a nightclub, not a nightclub, a wine bar in um, Bowden, where a lot of the boys used to live, near Altrincham again, you know, South Manchester. <laughs> and we'd all been in trouble this Saturday night, and the Sunday, it was Sunday lunch, and... Poor Robbo was in there with a the wife and all, <laughs> uh, having Sunday lunch, you know, in a private little room. It was great. It's a great place. City and United would go in there. Um, one of the nicest parts of Manchester. And I was in there because I was, the house points were low. I was in the shit. And I thought, <laughs> the house points were yeah, low. <laughs> oh, terrible. <laughs> so I'm in there and I said hello to Brian, we'll have a quick glass. I better go. I've got a sort of quiet family lunch right here, no problem. All of a sudden the door opens. <laughs> Door opens and in comes, I think it was Haley at the time, Gordon's daughter. Got her, huh? And the wee boy, Ed, I think it was Eddie, Edward. Whoosh, one, two. And he just said, in there, kids. Your Uncle Brian's in there. Have a nice lunch. <laughs> Shut the door and off he went. Left him a Robson and his wife. <laughs> 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 that is brilliant. Magic. Was it, so was that, the, was that when the culture started of drinking a lot? It was, Fergie came in and stopped it all, didn't he? yeah. Liverpool, they tell me McDermott would go out and after a game and go missing for three days. Love Jimmy it. Case was the same. Yeah, you know, in those days, as long as you performed on match day, they, you know, as long as you kept performing regular, no problem. Yeah, uh, was the Man United team that you played for similar to the Man United team now in terms of not getting to where the standard where they should be? Oh no, we I'd say we were much better. You were better. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But he's one at the top, were you? one at the top, were you? St no, Stapleton, Mark Hughes, Whiteside, people like that, Strachan, Robson. You know what I mean? You look what they got now. God dear. But Liverpool were brilliant. And don't forget that Everton side were really, really good. Yeah. Um, you left tonight because you said you never got enough game time. He said to me, uh, Big Ron, I knew I was getting forced out. And I had a great contract. I could have just said, no, I'm happy here. I bought a, uh, built a new house. Not bought a house, built a new house. But my pride said, no, 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 you can't stay here. You can't be a squad player uh, playing the reserves. No, 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 no. And if I did play in the reserves, 
or train wherever youth team and all that, I'd always try and help, definitely. Because they were young kids like me when I went to Ipswich. But it's just, it was your pride said, no, no, no. And uh, I never even asked. He said, I, I've done a deal. You're off to Coventry. I said, his wife says that to me a lot. You go to Coventry, you back <laughs> off. But um, I went, what? He says, yeah, Don Mackay's on his way up. I want you to go. I'm bringing in Terry Gibson. And I knew Terry Gibson from uh, Tottenham days. And I just went, okay, not a problem. I said, you know, I'll do it. So I didn't even think about it. Uh, see, when you're playing reserves, did any of the younger players go on to make it big? The, the ones, the, the young the young ones coming through was Whiteside and Mark Hughes and Paul McGrath. How was McGrath? How, what, what was McGrath like? I've read his book. Paul was very quiet. I mean, extremely quiet. I didn't know he had a drink problem. And I like a drink, but I yeah. don't have a problem. I didn't realise Big Paul had that. I, I, I can't read his book because I remember as this big, gentle, polite, great player. Lightning fast as well, by the way. People didn't realise how quick he was. Yeah. Uh, he was some player, but quietly spoken. Yeah. Lovely guy. What about Mark Hughes, Tim? Top player? Mark, Mark Hughes was very quiet, hard as nails, whereas Norman was loud and dirty as you like. Norman would top you. But um, no, I, I, listen, there's not many people I don't get on with. There was none of them three. You know, I, I've spoken to Paul on radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's somewhere outside Dublin now or in Dublin. I think he's doing really well. Well, he was on Sky last week and he looked really well, so... Uh, it's, it's a bevy, you know, but it wasn't just that. They, when he's been a, through a lot in his life, I When you're on a slippery slope, from what from what I can learn, if, it's, if you're skint, you drink, you can't afford it, and then once you hit that drug trail as well and you're, you're, you've no job, no income, you just, everything goes. You yeah. lose everything. You lose absolutely yeah. everything. It's heartbreaking. Uh, slippery it's slippery. Not, by the way, it's not just them stars. There's so many players in Division 1, 2 and 3 that we should think about. I promise you, no one really talks about them. There's so many people out there with big problems, footballers, because they all wanted to play for Man United, Spurs, Ipswich, whoever, and they didn't. And then their career, you know, just careers downhill. Yeah. It doesn't go that way, it goes that way. And where do they go? You know, they've no money. Yeah. It's terrible. Tough enough, football is tough. And then you said Coventry, QPR, various other clubs uh, back. QPR at- was good. Jim Smith, there's a character. Jim for Smith, him. who was a derby manager for years. Brilliant. Uh-huh. Right, let me tell you about Jim Smith. So Coventry was great, um, but it was quite clear they had a problem, again, with the back. Yeah. And, and J- John Sillett, who was there, he said to me, if we get the cup final, I'm going to give you a benefit game. Because I was honest when I went there. And I said, benefit game? I've only been here you know a few months I can't, I can't we get the cup final I'll give you a game and they got the cup final they beat Spurs do you remember right no, no, no. and I went no 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 way can't do it can't do it so I went from Coventry to QPR Jim Smith what a kick of, of all the characters of football he's right up there and he says right how bad you're bad I says well I'm getting by he says what do you mean I say I'm playing a, a Saturday I just did a couple of days and then I'm, I'm all right. So that'll do, that'll do. Let's go down, right? So we go down, we meet the chairman, right? Yeah. And um, in those days, you know, there was, uh, how can I say this? We agree a fee, we agree wages, okay? And um, it's a long time ago now, so it probably doesn't matter. But there was, you know, there was a little incentive, a bit of dough and all that and stuff like that, you know, as a, a thank you very much. It came from, I think it came from one club to another. And anyway, they look after you. And um, chatting to the chairman, he said, fine. He said, this bad back. He said, uh, how bad is it? So I go, he sends me to his surgeon at Charing Cross Hospital. I wait four hours for this surgeon to turn up. Eventually turns up, beautiful suit, Savile Row, bow tie. Sorry to keep you, Mr. Brazil. I've looked at the x-rays. Come here, come in the room, da da da. Bend down four times, right? Touch your toes. <laughs> I know what it is. He said, it's your core, it's not strong enough. I've looked at the x-rays, it's your core. Go back, sign, no problem. Boom, right? Go back, Jim's like, oh, thank God for that. Anyway, play a few games. I think I, I, think I only scored one goal against Blackburn, good goal. But I didn't play many games. And it's a pre-season. I thought, I'll look after myself, I'll get fit. And I did. We went to uh, Scandinavia, running through the woods. It was like a knife in my back. 
I had to stop. Eventually, I can't play anymore, right? It's gone. The back is gone. So he phones me up. He's living in Woodstock, Oxfordshire. And he says to me, we've got to go to London. The chairman wants to meet us, right? And this guy was, I won't say his name, but he was fierce. And he lived down South London. It's a cup final morning. Jim picks me up. I said, all right, boss? He said, yeah, not really. I said, I'm worried. I went, why? He says, Chairman, you can't reason, man. He says, but there's one good thing. I says, what's that? He said, the fucking M25 has been finished, thankfully. We won't be holding that up. <laughs> I went, what? So we go down. Nice as pie. Wife comes in. Beautiful house. South London. Cup final's coming on. He puts the champagne down, the chairman, looks at me, said, you've had me over. I went, pardon? You have had me over. I want some money back. You can't con me. I went, oh. He says, Tottenham Man United was no good. You can't fucking con me, son. I said, hold on a minute. I was honest. I told you from day one. I went to your Good. surgeon, Charing Cross Hospital. I had some money. You kept half back. So I'm here for you to give me my other half. He went, are you fuck? I want the other half. I want my money back. Oh, yeah. And his wife come in. Yeah, sorry, love. We're not finished here yet. <laughs> anyway, the final, the second half starts. Fucking Jim's like that. Jim's fucking like that. <laughs> and I'm looking at him thinking, there's fucking two hitmen going to walk in here in a moment. Is it see you later, Alan? <laughs> and then they're not right. You might be telling the truth now, fuck off. And me and Jim get in the car, they went, fuck it now. Thank God that's over. And that was my last club, fucking finished. Did you get your money? Or? No. No, but you got a half, never take your half. Yes, no, no. We settled on half. Because <laughs> Jim, is he not famous for like going on rants, Jim Smith? Oh, he, I've been in Langlands with him, the famous Langlands Brasserie. And uh, he was celebrating. <laughs> his tie was down, he had this big vein across his head. And by the way, that was bulging during this meeting with the chairman. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that. And um, his language was terrible. What's that? And the, the maitre d' would come over, who we all know. <laughs> hey, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry. There's dinosaurs. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. What was I fucking saying? <laughs> <laughs> the cigar would come out. He was hilarious, by the way. Uh, but having Harry read that though, quite tight. Oh, yeah, because they're all characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry wouldn't be doing what he's doing, bevying and smoking cigars. <clears throat> but Harry's a, he's a great guy, Harry. Great character. He yeah. could tell you some stories. Yeah. Uh, right, Al, so 27, you retire. So when you yes. retire that age, what have you got? Wife, kids? Uh, yeah, two kids at the time. And had you, had, had, you, had you made enough money where you didn't no. really need to worry about no. no, 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 no. So were you worried about your future at that point? Uh, no, because I don't worry about nothing. Never, no? No. How come, why? How, where'd you get that attitude for? Because round the corner there's always something, you know, door open, in we go. Yeah. Absolutely. No, 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 no. And when did that door open for you? That opened, uh, London was good, when I started doing a bit of financials and bits and pieces. And then I got into, uh, I had a pub, which was great fun. Wow. No, I had a pub, which was brilliant. Where was in, that? In Ipswich. And when they, well, what happened was I was doing the finance for two friends and they couldn't afford it in the end, so I bought it, which was probably not the best thing to do in the world when, you know, because I love sitting at a bar talking to people, yeah, yeah. sitting and talking to people here. And it was great at first, but then I got bored. I wanted to do media. And when you're not there, things go wrong. Quite simple as that. So I made a decision, media, media, media. Local radio, co-commentaries, Five Live, co-commentaries, Angler TV, and then Sky for five years. So I did co-commentary for Sky. I did all the playoffs. Wembley, two great games, Gillingham, Man City, Sunderland against Charlton. I'd done all them. That was Nicky Weaver, wasn't it, that when you taught it? Done them all. Yeah, yeah. Loved it. And then why one, media for you though? Sorry, just interrupt you. Why? why what was your because thought I like talking. Of getting the media, yeah. As you can guess, I like talking. Yeah. And um, was out with Paul Miller in the city having a lunch, an Indian, and we're in the um, Soho part of London. It was um, I always forget, I always remember Red Fort. It was called. And he said to me, he "says Baz used to call me Baz Baz. Can he be doing radio tonight?" I went, "What radio?" <laughs> I went, fucking hell. <laughs> what did you be up with, you had a few beers? 
oh, all day. <laughs> <laughs> I went, what? It's like the oh. marathon all over again, isn't it? It's like the marathon. Yeah, I went, talk sport. <laughs> Fucking hell. So I said to them, the way I built, did I, um, where's, where's Oxford Street? He said, sir, it's just there, 50 yards on the right. I went, oh, right. Number, he went, no, 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 I think you go to the right. Lovely. I get there at 27. There he is, Mike Porky Parry. Right, he's like, he's like fucking, what's his name? The guy from um, the, tr- the, the, the dwarf from um, Lord of the Rings, Gimli. Uh, <laughs> fucking beard out here. Uh, what time do you call this? I'm like, sorry? He said, who are you? He said, I'm Mike Parry. I run this gaff. I went, all right, all right, all right. What time do you call? I went, it's, well, it's now nine minutes to seven. Why? Did you got a show you do at seven? I went, yeah. And you pay me from seven to when? Nine o'clock, two hours. I went, yes, what's your problem? <laughs> Where's the script? He said, there's no script. What do you mean there's no script? I was with Paul Miller. He came with me. He said, just go on there. Tell people who you are. Give out the number, someone will call you. I went, well, what if they fucking don't call me? What am I going to do, right? It was talk sport at the time. Uh, talk, was it talk radio? Talk radio, I got it. Uh, it's a long time ago. It's 25 years ago. Maybe a little bit more. And he, he said, just, I said, nah, 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 nah. He's coming on. We went, what? I said, come on. You can have half my fee. And we sit down and bang the news. Three minutes past seven, bosh. Hi, welcome to talk sport. Let's say it was talk sport. It might have been talk radio at the time. Um... No, it was talk radio because we changed. Talk radio, da da da. Alan Brazo, ex Tottenham. I'm with uh, Paul Miller. Hey, you know from Tottenham days, we've just had a beautiful lunch. London's busy out there. You might be a black cab driver. You might be a lot. Anyway, fucking hell, ding, 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 ding. And then all the lights lit up. We spent two hours just taking calls. Amazing. Right, and I put the phone down. It was packed, right? But I'd, I'd never fucking heard of them. Yeah. Walked out. And he went, I weren't bad. I went, oh, thanks. I said, uh, thank you very much. Who do I make the invoice out to? See you later. I, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, can we talk about another day? No, not the way you fucking spoke to me. Yeah, but I want another day, right? Yeah. It's not the way you spoke to me. He said, oh, come on. You come, I did let. I went, oh, well, maybe, maybe. And that's how it all started. So you talked radio up to that point? No listeners? None. Didn't even register. Do you think it was a good thing that you weren't prepared for it? No, would, it's you, just would you have never been the type that they got nervous and worried no, about? Can I give me the script? I wouldn't have looked. But walking in here today, I've not looked. That's amazing. No, and it just that. came naturally to you when you were on yeah. that radio. So I've done, done a few there. Then they moved to just over the water, Blackfriars, Hatfields. Um, and then it became, the year 2000, it became Talk Sport, year 2000. And then we moved to the, sh- the Shard. Well, we're in the Shard now, next door, the Baby Shard. And it's just. It's remarkable from no listeners to three and a half million listeners. I don't think they take they take into account Scotland. I don't think they take into account uh, all over Europe. I heard today, um, you know, people from America, Canada were text emailing. It's all over because t- Australia. I went to Brisbane to do the um, was it the Ashes? Fucking hell, we're in the Pig and Whistle pub. Aussies come up and say, "I love the show. I love the show." <laughs> They listen every day because the time difference. <laughs> I think so, it? it is. But and did you and Mike Parry end up becoming really good pals? We did. On it, we, we did. But hot and cold, we'd have a lot of arguments because his boss was a guy called Kelvin McKenzie, who was the editor of the Sun. Son, that's right. Yeah, hey. He was editor of the Sun. He'd take no prisoners. But if he wanted to give me a baller, can he make Parry do it? Right. And say, Mike, fuck off. <laughs> Don't talk to me. I'm your boss, baller. Mike, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what what was it that you would in the early days? What is it that would get that would that would anger them about what you were doing? You got to start behaving and looking after yourself and stop going out and. Uh, I said, look, I am what I am. You're not going to change me now. Uh, it's like take it or leave it type thing. Yeah, yeah, and you got to be careful. You know what you say on radio. We got off cup. Oh, I'll say what I feel within reason. Have you always been the way you are? You just say whatever the fuck you think of her. Huh? Um. I would, no, I think the older I get, the more the more animated I get, and the more angry I get. You know, it's, it's like I'm terrible now. I go home, and if it's not football, it's news or a movie. I don't. I, I can't watch Strictly. I can't watch fucking In the Jungle. I can't watch any of that shit, <laughs> and I can't listen to youngsters talking about modern day things, which are absolute bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, there's no common sense anymore. There's no respect. 
and there's no common sense. And I hate it. Uh, see, see, when you were saying there, the first show was seven to nine at night, when did the breakfast show start for you? Well, I started doing a few, um, and they said, try breakfast, right? That's a good story. And uh, they said, try breakfast. I, I, did a, I think I did a couple of afternoons, because in, in those days they were juggling. Who's, who's best for this? Who's best for that? And uh, Paddy said to me, what about breakfast? So I went, what time is that? It's just six till ten. I went, fuck off. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. You're six like consistently just tell people to fuck off. Four hours, <laughs> six or ten, forget it. He says, do me a favour, go back to Canary Wharf, James Whale. Do you remember James Whale? No. Oh, a broadcasting legend. Right. Great on telly, great on radio. J James, he's, uh, oh God, he goes back to the 60s, 70s. And was he like the guy you looked at? He, no, 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 no. He used to do the late night, he still does the late right. night shows. James not very well, he still does it. Bit weird, but great. He's, he's Farage's mate, Nigel Farage, and all. Anyway, he says, James wanted to come down and have a chat with you. So he comes down. We sat outside the Marriott, glass of bubbly. <laughs> Me and James said, Right, Brazil. So I think you've got a chance. He said, The management have said, Can I come down? He says, You've got to do breakfast. So I went, I can't. The, my lifestyle won't, won't allow me to do it, James. Impossible. He says, Yes, it will. He said, Have they spoke to you about money? I went, No. I said, the pay peanuts, peanuts, seven to nine, I'll do it. And hopefully, so he, I said, well, talk to me about money. And within about 30 seconds, I went, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> 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 I'll give it a go. <laughs> and did you find it tough at first, or did you just take no. that No. What's he in the early days, Al? What's like the latest you've got in, in terms of then starting at six? No, no, no. The other time I've been caught in, you know, the, the, the car and the roads and all that. And I have, look at that. Even at that time in the morning, leaving Suffolk at 3.30, anything can go wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Someone could jump off a bridge, someone a lorry could fucking roll over. You just don't know. That's why I had to buy a, a place. But, um, no, no, I'm pretty good now. So, you know, Wednesday morning, if I travel up, I set my alarm for three-ish, 10 to three. I can have a little dose for 20 minutes and then shower, go. No problem. Yeah. Or if I'm in the flat, which I was this morning... I can set it for 10 to, 10 to 5, picked up at half 5. Because McCoy said, McCoy's been on here, and he said that you, some days you come in at literally one minute to six. Oh, no, I still do. But I don't go on to four minutes past. Yeah, yeah, so you've got five minutes to... Yeah. And do I, you prep anything? No. That's incredible. No, I, I'll grab a paper, and within within a minute, I know what's important to get me through the first hour. Right. And, and see, early on, can you remember the first thing that you got pulled up for that you've maybe said on here? That they were like, you kind of, kind of. Nah, not really. I, d I do. You got to be very careful politically when there's an election on. But that didn't bother me at first. Um, you can't swear, of course. You got to be careful uh, gambling and stuff. You know, there is so many restrictions now. What you can talk about going on the piss or having a few bets. You can't. It's, it's a no-no now. When was the moment that you realised that this is massive now? This has got. Much bigger than I ever I thought think, it would. Yeah, no, you know, because people come up to you or taxi drivers, love the show, Al, you know, it gradually just builds and builds and builds. Uh -huh. It Is does. It, was, that your, was that your kind of prime audience, the taxi drivers? It was at first, yeah. Lorry drivers and all that. And people said white van man and all that. I don't give a shit. I don't care who listens, whether they're posh or you'd be amazed who listens. Yeah. Do, have you ever had any big names, maybe they spoke to, but you've heard that they listen to your show? Um, can you remember? Well, I, you know, when we talk about supers, Chris Tarrant says I listen every morning when I'm fishing and stuff like that. Wow. Now, there's a lot of people have said to me, and I got inducted in the Radio Academy Hall of Fame, which was fantastic. So, you know, it's, 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 been a, it's been a massive part of my life, by the way. Think about it. Yeah. Not only financially, it's been a massive part of my life. It really has, doing all the dinners. My daughter now is into corporate entertainment. So she's sort of piggybacked and she's now doing a great job on her own. Um, my middle girl's a, d a designer for a famous handbag range and she stays in the flat that I bought because I couldn't keep coming up and back every day. Uh, my youngest is a doctor. Wow. You know what I mean? So, listen, I've been very lucky. Can you remember when they offered you that big contract? Was it the biggest contract in was it like radio history or something? No, 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 no. no. Every year's a, you know, every 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 end of contract's a big one. But 
I've got the stage now that I'm getting old. Yeah. And it's the case, so I think this is fair, guys. That's what I want. I'll tell you one, one thing I remember. When, when the Twin Towers got hit, a couple of days later, uh. there was a, there was a, the, the, the flights were all over the place. And then a little bit later on, there was a BA flight wouldn't leave Heathrow. And by all accounts, there's something to do with the number of the flight, and it kept getting, they kept getting warnings. This flight doesn't leave, we're going to blow it up. And I always remember, I said to Paddy, I said, by the way, a flight from Heathrow, he went, yeah, it's a nightmare, I still won't go. I said, yeah, it will. Get on the BA, let's go on it. Let's go and do a show in Washington, right? Let's fly Heathrow to Dulles. I went, you sure? I went, let's do it. Come on. A couple of days later, he says, we're on. They'll do it, BA. They want, they, want, they want you and me in the flight. There'll probably be only three, four passengers, but they want to do it. I said, we'll go and do the show over there. We got on the flight, big jumbo, off we went, and uh, hardly anyone on the flight. In fact, there was one up where we were in business, and there was one or two in the economy. And uh, we had a few drinks on the way there. Captain said, I can't come out the cockpit. It's all sealed, but I can give you an interview before and after. And I always remember getting to um, DC, Dulles Airport, and we got there in the middle of the night, trudged through the snow, had another glass, went to bed, got up three hours later, had a bit of breakfast, boom, down to the studio. And the guy said, guys, I can't believe you've come here. Thank you. Guy owned the radio station. <coughs> we couldn't get the link right. Right up to six o'clock our time, we couldn't get it. And suddenly it clicked through. Welcome to Talk Sport from Washington, D.C. And that that was an amazing moment. Yeah. We spoke about it. And Paddy was the correspondent of the Express in New York. Uh, sorry, um, in New York and in Washington, right? But mainly Washington, so he knew Washington like that. And uh, anyway, we'd done the show. The guy was ecstatic. We then went back to the hotel, and a big American limo company got us a fantastic. My guy, my driver will take you anywhere. Big guy, six foot eight. Hey guys, he said. We called him Benson after some American program, right? Massive uh -huh. guy. This is my city. You're my guest in the back. And he took us wherever we went. We went to this round robin bar, um, a, hot uh, a hotel, because it, it was like minus 20. It was freezing outside the White House. And we went to this uh, bar, and Paddy was showing someone else the other side of it. I went, bollocks, where's the bar? I'm freezing. <laughs> and I'm in there, and there's a couple of guys. We got chatting, and the guy knew Paddy from when he was a correspondent. We had an absolute ball. We went to Sm Smith & Walensky's big steakhouse, and we flew home, and BA were absolutely ecstatic over the moon so we do stupid things yeah it just seemed right to do it at the time amazing uh, is there any other trips that you've had away with the radio that you are like pinch me moments uh moscow went in moscow for what uh the champions league chelsea man year wow when uh, terry slept yeah i didn't really want to go and i went um which was fantastic uh there's a story i can't tell in it but, <laughs> but, uh, but that was a great weekend Went there. I didn't go to the game. Well, you uh, missed it. Well, I, I was doing. I was doing a corporate, and uh, it was pouring a rain, and I was with Ronnie Arani, yeah, at the cricket. Uh -huh. A Man United fan. It was lashing it down. He says, "Big Al, where are you? I'm on my way to the game. Where am I meeting you?" I went, "You're not." Zadma took it around me, cat A, and I was in the. Um, I think it was the. It was the Chelsea Hotel. Where well, they stayed before the game, not the Ritz Carlton, but it was a swanky hotel. And I went over, went over there at lunchtime. Somebody let them down. I give them a, not Chelsea, but there was a big group of a hundred people there, and I give them a chat and I told them a few stories. And uh, I said I don't really fancy the game. And the manager heard me. He says, "What?" He says, "You don't want to get the game." He says, "Can I go to the game? Can I have your pass?" I went, "Well," he said, "I tell you what I'll do. I've got a VIP area up here." the massive screen that we have all the embassy officials come private no one will bother you I put a dozen bottles of Clico there Aviv Clico <laughs> and you can invite a few friends I said hold on a minute so I looked out the window and went you're on <laughs> there's a ticket Ronnie sorry mate I can't make it <laughs> and I had a ball did you invite Ronnie up to the hotel Ronnie went to no he went to, went the, to game. the game but you got the game the security was amazing 
And you had to walk miles and I'm, fuck that. Fuck yeah, so, yeah. a bottle of champagne. Uh, and I watched yeah. on telly, I saw a bit of a game. Any other sporting events inside the football that you've no, been No, we've done that. So that, that, was, that was the, I think it was the Wednesday night or something. We'd done the show Thursday. I went back on the Friday to London. Then I flew straight out to, uh, it was a great week. Flew out to Nice. Helicopter Saint-Tropez. Wow. Picked up a yacht, had a suite and sailed into Monaco for the Grand Prix. So well, I've had some great weeks. That's incredible. Yeah, great. Can you believe like where your, where your life came to? Not really, no. No, no, I always thought I'd do well. Did you always think you would do well yeah. just because of your personality? No one say personality. I just believed in myself. Uh-huh. What about like co-presenters? Yeah. Is there anyone that you enjoyed debating with? Co-presenters or guys that come on as um, guests? One or two try and be funny. John Gaunt tried to be funny all the time when he when I hand over at 10 o'clock. He'd always try and be a bit funny and clever. Gone to the man of the people. He was a Coventry kid, right? right. I, I'd listen. I had no problem with John Gaunt. But he'd give it the big one, his new Jaguar and all that. But I used to wind him up and I'd say, oh, John, all the best. Listen, um, I'm really looking forward to it, but I, I'm going to put Ken Bruce on the car on the way home, but have a good show. <laughs> Fucking hell. He'd have a whinge or complaint and all that. But yeah, we, we do, we do. I don't go a mover on it, talks for. No, no, absolutely. But I don't give a shit. Have I you and, did you and Paddy have a band on the radio? Oh, we always do. I've, do you know, I've not spoken for ages because he's at a bus stop. Where are people there? Oh, a massive bus stop. And, but he's gone missing on me lately. He normally he sends a little text or email. So hopefully he's okay because uh, I, I don't see him anymore because him and talks for. But uh, at the same time, you know, we, we, we've got some great stories together and memories together. Uh, is but, there any you can tell us or is it just the Washington one or anymore? Because um, I'm sure he's told, he told a story about you on the radio that went viral. Oh, no, he does it all the time. It's, see, there's... When, when after a show, you've got... Uh, it's like playing football. You, you, you come off there, you feel vibrant, you feel Adrenaline, great. Adrenaline, uh-huh. When you, when you play football, you feel the best you've ever felt. Especially if you had a good game, scored a few goals. Radio can do that if you have a real good show. You come off, right, where are we going? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but you've got to calm down. He doesn't. He just gets louder and louder and louder. But he's a very intellectual guy, but he does bullshit and you've got to challenge him. There's a couple of times you've got to, you know, I've, I've had to pull people off him a few times. Have you, eh? Oh, God, yeah. When he's, when he's gob goes, yeah, you know. It's, yeah. What, what, yeah. Uh, what about Adrian Durham? Uh, Durham's all right. We, we had a little bit of a set too now and again, but no, 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 no. I think we've realised he does a brilliant job around the grounds and he he he, he says I do a brilliant job on, re- on breakfast. Does it not know you how he talks about Scottish football at times? Or? Uh, they, they all do. They all think it's pub football. Yeah. And they're bang out of order. They, they are bang out. Yes, we don't have the money. Uh, Celtic Rangers is bigger. As, as, as far as I'm concerned, Celtic Rangers is as big as any club in England. Any. I mean that. Man United, Liverpool, any. And if we were down here... And uh, then they'd see how big we are. Yeah. So I don't like the way they belittle Scottish football. And I'd tell my bosses at Talksport as well, we've got to do a little bit more Scottish. But it's like... Yeah, you're the only one that really... Well, Jim White's brought it in now, isn't he? Uh-huh, but you, you were don't, the pioneer Don't for talk it. about him, please. <laughs> <laughs> how did you find that Jim's been on here as well? Is it good? I hope you got three listeners. <laughs> <laughs> what about Simon Jordan? He's kind of... He's taking over that show, isn't he, Simon Jordan? Simon is very, very good. Oh, don't say he's taking over because you'll upset Jim. Simon, I like Simon. Very clever. Very good, isn't he? Very clever. Uh, he's good when you talk to him one-on-one or maybe a glass of wine. Simon's he looks after himself. He's, 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 he's a bit like McCoy. He's, he's, he's got fingers and pies everywhere. But I do like Simon a lot. And some people say, they're amazed I got on with him, but I do. Yeah, I bet he likes a nice glass of wine, Simon. He does, but in moderation, I think. No, but I mean, in terms of the quality of the wine. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. He's a snob. Don't get me wrong, he's a snob. (laughs) You know, he he wouldn't live in Sims Hill. He'd live in... um, uh, He'd be my guy, wouldn't he? Newton Merns. Uh, He'd be Merns, definitely. Uh, But but saying that, listen, he lives down in my bay, and I see him now and again. He's very helpful. I like Simon Jordan. I do. Yeah, he's very well, good. Well, I'll tell you a story quickly about Paddy and Simon Jordan. Right, go for it. Was, um, and this is uh, it's, it's a few years ago. It's the playoff final at Cardiff. And Palace are playing West Ham. And Simon is the owner of West uh, of uh, Palace. And we get invited to the end of season dinner on the pitch. Massive marquee. There's a few hundred people. And Paddy gets very nervous when he talks in public. 
right? And he will chuck wine down his throat <laughs> to try and go over his nerves. But when he's had one or two, too many, oh, I said, these are the three stories. When we go on stage, stick to them, right? And we get there, it is heaving. There's hundreds of people there. This is probably the Friday before the Sunday game. Massive game, £100 million pounds worth, Palace West Ham down there. And uh, big guys meet his big leather jackets, foot eight guys, leather. I'm like, oh, God, what's going on here? You know, security? No, anyway, we go in and the secretary meets us, said, right, Alan, you okay? Yeah, no problem. Got it sorted. Don't worry. Am I you okay? Yep. Is there any wine? So he gets us some wine, right? <laughs> Party, blah, 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 blah. Calm down. <laughs> Three stories, remember? Well, we go on there and I kick off with a couple of stories. Lovely. No problem. He goes on. I'm expecting to be talking about something. <laughs> Fucking hell. He said, I love Simon Jordan. I've, I, I've, I've made a little ditty towards Simon because he loves his telephones. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, talk about the game. To when Simon's on the phone, he makes love to telephone. Oh, fucking hell. And then he comes out with, hands up here. Let's be honest. Where did he get his money from? Hands up. Who trusts the chairman of this football club? I thought oh. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> And then he goes into another one, and there's a guy at the end of the stage, big guy, saying, off. And I'm like, no. He's going, off. I'm going, no. So eventually we had to cut it short. And we get, we get, we get frog marched up to the director's, box, uh, director's room, right? Where he is. He's not there. It's his brother, right? His brother, who's made his money out of real estate, by all accounts. He didn't seem the sharpest tool in the toolbox to me. <laughs> right. right. Anyway, and he's, how dare you come into my house and slag my bra? I went, whoa, whoa, calm down. He was only having a bit of fun. You're a disgrace. I'm going to talk to your bosses. I know Kelvin McKenzie. He went mental, mental. And he, so I went, whoa, whoa, calm down. Let's, let, let, do you want to be a beer, mate? He went, yeah. He said, don't, don't you go by that bar. I went, fuck off. Right. <laughs> right? Hey, what's your problem? You calm down. No, I haven't. And I'm going to tell Simon, you are barred from here and I'll get you barred. Anyway, fucking room. Storms off. And I looked at Paddy. I went, fucking well done, mate. What happened to the... He went, oh, come on. Come on. Bit of fun. It's not fun. I said, you just ruined the whole night, you prick. Right? <laughs> I says, no, I'm worried how we're going to get out of here because fucking they were raging. raging. Oh, and he, the security were like... It was a fucking A-team outside... The venture says, excuse me, you got a minute? Have you got the car? And the guy went, what? 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 I said, you got the car? And Dominic, Simon's brother, said, you take us to the station? He went, oh, leave it with me. He said, I've got your car, guys, in the car. Okay, now. It was a, it was a tiny car. He'd fucking put his head out the sunroof, the guy was that big. <laughs> they dropped us at the station and went, thanks, buddy. Thank you to Dominic. Paddy looked at me and went, he didn't say get a car. He says, no, I didn't. We weren't going to get out there unless I've done what I've <laughs> done. done. Uh, get on the fucking train and shut up. <laughs> but that was Mike for you. What a guy. When he had a few, everything goes out the window. I know, uh, oh, oh, it's good fun, isn't it? Oh, God, I, you know, I've had, I've had some blinders. I've had some blinders. I've made a few ricks on radio as well when I've been out all night. I, What's I your biggest rick you've made? Well, people say Bob Monkhouse. Mate, that was my next question. That is incredible. But I think I think Hansi Kronje was worse. But I'll, so I'll, talk, I'll, talk to, to you the Hansi Kronje first. All right. So um, it's the Cricket World Cup. I don't know a lot about cricket, but I spoke cricket today because um, uh, Joe got the Joe Root got he's got the record runs for an English Test batsman. Uh, he's the the biggest of all now. He's yeah. great. So I do have to do a bit of reading, but. I've been out somewhere. I've, I've, Have you been I've, to the cricket? Is it not meant to be a good day for a drink? Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, 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 I went to, funny enough, glad you brought that up. Joe Root has just beaten Sir Alistair Cook's record. And Alistair Cook, to break the record, I was there at the Oval, I think it was. Oh, wow. Mm, beautiful lunch. Never seen a ball. <laughs> So that's my. <laughs> so he broke the record that you never seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing, mate. Right. So I forgot what it was now. So going back to um, Hand, the guy. Uh, oh yeah. So the... this guy's called Neil Maynard. Uh, Neil Main is it Main Main Maynard, and uh, he is down Cape Town, down at the cricket, and it's 
uh, the, that's where the final is going to be. And um, he's, I said, Neil, come on, describe it all. Describe it. He said, Alan, the weather's beautiful here. It's a cool 78 degrees. And um, it really, it's an open World Cup cricket. And as I say, I've been out all, all, all day. All <laughs> my, what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> one of them, you know, tired. I think it was a Friday. I'm knackered. Just want to go home. <laughs> And uh, Paddy's got his script. He knows nothing about cricket, by the way. <laughs> and Neil, da 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 And what sort of guests you got? So he rattles off a few great guests. He said, I've got a few of the West Indies fast bowlers coming in. I've got such and such. Neil Donald, da 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 And I don't know what made me say it. I said, what about Hansy? <laughs> Will Hansy join you in the commentary box? He went, Hansy? I said, Neil, Hansy. He said, what? <laughs> Hansy Cronia, I went. I went, yeah, Hansi Cronje, you've rattled off some great South Africans. He's a gem. Alan. And Paddy's going. <laughs> Live on radio. He's going, no, no. Hansi. Hansi's dead. And the plane crash. And all, all, all I could think of was, I'm sorry, I must have been on fucking holiday. Now, that for me was a killer. Oh, fucking 10 o'clock. What, oh, oh. what did you say back? I said... I'm sorry, I must have been on holiday. <laughs> so, going back to Bob Monkhouse. Oh, my God. That's unreal. No, this is... People say this is worse. This is, I, I love this clip, man. It's one of my favourite clips of that. Well, it's not mine. Again, I, 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 I take on too many things. I have three different gigs to go oh, to. Man. And again, I had about three hours sleep. And I come in and Billy the cab dropped me. He said, you sure? Oh, that's Billy, I'll be fine. Adrenaline will kick in. And I'll never forget it. Fucking hell. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to look at the guests. I'm like, I don't care. Just put them, put them on, put them on. Right? It's a few years ago. Put them on, put them on. Right? And it's Gary Bushel. Now, I don't know what it is about Gary, but I was never, you know, a TV critic. Give us a break. <laughs> And he's telling the story. Mike knew him well because of his television, because of his um, newspapers and all that. And he's chatting away. And I'm like, oh, God, come on, what time is it? Who's the next guest? I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> and he bothered kind of talking about, you know, Bob. And so I picked up a little bit. I went, ah, oh, Bob, love Bob. But I, do you know what, Bob? I bet he didn't know this guy. Bob on his, on his uh, circuit, if he's not on telly, he's very blue. He's very rude, <laughs> but he's hilarious. He's hilarious. And then I've gone, how is Bob now anyway? And Gary had been talking about his fucking memorial service, right? <laughs> and I had ignored it. And Paddy's gone, no. I, he went, what was that, Alan? And so Gary Bush was now clocked it. He said, he's not been listening. He said, uh, Bob, I said, yeah. He said, but, uh, Bob was seriously, I said, yeah, I heard that. But I also was told that Bob was improving. <laughs> and, Holy fuck. <laughs> he said, Bob's dead. I went, oh, sorry about that. Fucking hell. Wow, that was a 10 o'clock party. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking Kelvin's been on. And... <laughs> but I saw people love, isn't it? People oh, love you, that. The, the, the rule there is you should concentrate. <laughs> you know. But sometimes, you know, I can't, four hours chatting's a lot, by the way. I date with these interviews, so if it's not somebody like you who's funny, mate, I find myself drifting off, mate. It's fucking hard work, can't it? Four People hours, you try to do four hours, when, you know, and you don't know who's on, you don't know your scripts, <laughs> you don't know who's coming on. I think I like the, the South African one better. Well, I <laughs> thought that was the best one. As everyone knows, you're a massive fan of Cheltenham. When, when did that first come to you, the, the love of Cheltenham? Cheltenham was uh, playing football. Who was the first club you went with? Was it usually your um, club? Um no, it wasn't my club, I went to Moan. Did you right? Yeah. And um I remember back in the horse to get out of trouble on the last day, last race, and it was a horrible day, and then the snow came down because the snow came down, brightened up, and it was in the Fred Winter, half free, won it, and it got me on my dough back. I was just hooked on Cheltenham. What price was that horse? Do you remember now? Uh, five to two. Five to two, and you start a few quid on it. Ah, that'd be quite big. Memory. And what was that? Just in amongst the punters for your first oh, time? Oh God, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the other big memory, and I've got to know John Joe Neal very well, was the historic mayor Don Run getting up in the line to win the Gold Cup. Well, I um, I was at Man United. Someone said, "Can I break? Can I? Can I get them two signed balls?" For a, a jockey who'd fallen off and was in a wheelchair, went absolutely no problem. 
And I went to Weatherby Race Course, give the ball, sign balls, and injured Jockey's Fund, right? He says, by the way, I'll win, uh, I'll win, this is his mate, he said, I'll win Cheltenham the Gold Cup. Right, the horse was called Wayward Lad, and I lumped on it 12s, 10s, 8s, bang, 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 right? And I looked at the history of the race, and they said he couldn't go up the hill, Wayward Lad, but he was second in a record-breaking time the year before, and I went, <laughs> now that'll do for me. And it was the year Michael Dickinson, the trainer, had the five first home, and Wayward Lad was in there. So I backed it, and I'll never forget it. Uh, brilliant with as usual a few pints of Guinness uh, get there and it's the gold cup and he goes two lengths clear jumping the second last up towards the line and the mayor uh, John Joe and Don runs on the second and he's going nowhere he's he's, he's fucking riding he's, and he pings the last wayward lad and goes another two lengths clear and halfway up the running I'm not I'm not counting my chickens I've got big money on this I've got my binoculars on John Joe the danger, <coughs> wayward, and the winning line. And the, all the paddies behind him, I said, come on, John Joe, come on, John Joe, come on, get her up, come on, John Joe. I'm going, go on, Brad, go on, Brad. Okay, now, oh, Peter Sullivan's commentating, never forget uh -huh. it. Up towards the line, the mayor's getting up, the mayor's getting up. And I get done on the line. Oh. Okay, now. And it was just, I, I won money, because I had 12 to 110 to one each way. Each way, right. <coughs> but what, a, I was like, the I boys. Was, I, it was just amazing. I came out of there like, wow, what a day that was. Uh -huh. And then I started going with radio. I talked to him. Was that your idea to put yes, Top Sport in a chill, though? Absolutely. And how did they take that at first? Mm, they all I said, you're mad. All our listeners go to Cheltenham. You're mad. you got to do it. Right? But let me give you a, a classic Cheltenham day. Right? And we're, we're getting radio now. I've, I, when I leave, I leave... I leave a deposit for next year or I don't get my house. And I stay in a place in Broadway, which is beautiful. Ligon Arms. Most beautiful village going. Thatch cottages everywhere. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Yeah. It's about 20 minutes out. And um, so this is how the day works. I get picked up. Monday, sorry, Monday we go to John Joe's yard. Right? I stay in the Ligon Arms. We do the show from John Joe's. He invites some of his owners. And there's a fridge the size of this floor to ceiling full of champagne. Wow. <clears throat> and it, last year was ridiculous. The wee woman came in. Funny enough, she was Scottish. And uh, she walked in, she's looking about. And I've never seen her before, right? And John's Joe's wife, Jackie, is a great hostess. You have what you like. You help yourself. Does full English breakfast. Have what you <clears throat> like. Anything. And all of a sudden, I'm, I start the show and we go to travel at 6.15. By Talk Sport Travel, 6.15, live from Jack Dawes Castle. John Joe uh, trains there with J.P. McManus, who owns it. And uh, we could throw at the travel. I went, oh, good, here we go. Monday, Cheltenham. This woman says, which one of you is uh, Mr. Brazil? And I'm like, I'm here. And she went, oh, Jackie told me to look <laughs> after you. I went, fucking quarter past six, <laughs> give us a break, will you? Did you have it? No, no, I says, no, 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 no. The, the rule is eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the rule is 8am right Coral Box or John Joe's 8 o'clock so you have a few and then you have a great show John Joe comes on brings a few guests up it's just magical the Monday building up then Tuesday uh, we go to the Coral Box 6am do the show 8 o'clock Steve up Dave Stevens <laughs> right 10 o'clock bang down, down the Guinness tent. I always have the first pint of Guinness in Germany. Uh, so how did that come about as well? How did you manage to get that? Because we go down there and they say, Mr. Brazil, would you like to taste the first pint? Come on. And they, they film it now. And we have the first pint and it's gorgeous. About half ten now, they let the punters in. And it's like the Wild West Saloon. They keep throwing the pints down. Ow, on me, on me, on me. I've got a picture of Eddie Jordan. There's 22 pints in front of us. Guinness. <laughs> but the problem is I do corporate as well. So I, I say the coral balls, I'll have two and I'm going down the corporate with Ray Parler. But you don't have two because the adrenaline's pumping, you're yeah. thirsty, you've spoke for four hours. So you have four or five, right? And then you go down and start the corporate. And of course, everyone there wants stories. They want a few pints for you. You've probably had a dozen pints before the first race. Wow. Before you've seen a horse. So it's not easy at Cheltenham. Yeah. 
the Tuesday's brilliant racing, so you try and keep a you know a clear head. head. And I leave four o'clock every day. This year I've got the Wednesday off, not radio, but the corporate. And Thursday, Friday is really tough. Oh, I get she's there, the wife's there, four o'clock at the gate. Waiting for you. And I fall in the car. <laughs> Leg and arms. <clears throat> Hugo, my dog's there. Front of the fire, cut the glass of red bed. Any other big names you've spent time with while you were at Cheltenham? Oh, like Fergie? Uh, Fergie's, yeah, Brian Robson last year. Uh, Fergie, Fergie's great, loves his race. Does he have a pint of Guinness, Fergie now? Does he what? Pint of Guinness. Uh, he, no, he likes his red. Red way? Yeah, red. I'm not saying he doesn't have a pint, I don't know. I, I see him later on. Uh, owners and trainers, McCoy's was in there, Sir Alex. Um, but you got all the trainers, you know, you get people from Sky, people from football, uh, f- people from rugby, uh, Mike Tindall there with a the Hoi Palloi, you know, they're all family, parts yeah, of the yeah. family. It's just a magical mix. And you meet people from every year. And when I go back to Broadway, everyone's there. You know, they go every year. And when they leave, they leave a deposit as well. You can't get in. Incredible. And then, but when I finish the Saturday, I'm done. No. I head to the Alps. I have to go to the Alps for a week. I was going to say for a, a dryer, but it's not a dryer. It's, a, it's a total different. We're talking Whispering Angel. <laughs> In the sun, bit of snow, fresh air. <coughs> lovely. And just, you know, refresh. You've got the best life ever, haven't you? I think I have now. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how long it'll last for, but it's brilliant. Uh-huh. Uh, do you say the odd occasion that you've missed a show at Cheltenham? Well, it's it's really hard you know? yeah. it, it is hard do, uh, do you ever get to a stage in the day where you think I'm missing tomorrow's show oh yeah but when I when I when I first missed especially early days straight straight out straight there no sleep you'd go on the radio and they sleep oh yeah and would you just kick on again on the radio yeah no not too late <laughs> and how, how would like your bosses react to that well it's party doesn't matter does it <laughs> <laughs> I would have um, I, no no I, I never I never drop them in it I'll text or call them say not for me today can't do it right oh no no you've, you've got to let them know it must you take a lot for you to get hangover thrown eh it's, you know, it's, a, it's a mixture of talking too much drinking too much and uh, working too much you know I used to do five six days a week getting up at that time time morning. Uh, and it does, it catches up with anyone, by the way. But, you know, it, the, uh, Cheltenham, sorry, played a part in you losing your job. You, you never... I think I've been sacked a couple of times from Cheltenham. <laughs> uh, can you remember the first time you got sacked? Well, people, new bosses come in, don't they? And they, and they try and give it the... Do they try and change you straight away? Absolutely. The big change is get rid of Brazil. Oh, is, is it? Oh, yeah. And what happens to that? Do you get called in at an office and say, you need to change how you are? Uh, no, I can tell right away they don't like me. Right, and then they'll put, for instance, I remember Keezy and Andy, a new guy brought them in, and they put them in the box at Cheltenham and me in a pub in Cheltenham. Wow. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? I could have said I'm not going, but I went, no, I'll do it. And the guy walked in, who from the East End of London, heard us in the pub, who was disgusted. He walked in with a bottle of Dom Perignon and he said, I'll get it open. I'll hit it. I said, it's 10 to 8, give me 10 minutes. Right? <laughs> 8 o'clock. <clears throat> and then I got back, got called in, you were drinking on the show. I went, yeah. He said, it's a sackable offence. Well, sack me then. I said, that's normal. We do it. It's Cheltenham Festival. We do it every year. Sack me. And um, I said, you're another one coming in, Billy Big Bollocks. I'm going. So I've, I've seen four off. You'll be five. And he was. Wow. Why don't they just embrace how good you are because of the number of I'll listeners t- that you get? I had one not long ago. <clears throat> Come in, try to change it. Really? See you later. He's gone. <laughs> That's incredible. So can you just tell us about the time where you actually did lose your job? I think you said you went on holiday for two weeks and you came back and you had your job yeah, back. Yeah, it's a belter. <laughs> what a guy, man. Me and Paddy are arguing. Kelvin. You and who, sorry? Paddy. Paddy, sorry. Huh? So Mackenzie's got the hump. Right, he's got the hump. Because you tell your mate, after Thursday's show, you're coming home on the Friday. You're going to do the. Sh- you're coming home on the Thursday. You're going to do the show from London Bridge, right at Hatfields, opposite London Bridge. You're going to do the show Friday. 
you're not down there, I'm not paying for you to get pissed at Cheltenham every day. Get home, right? So Paddy keeps us quiet. In those days were Lord Vesty's balls. Lord Vesty was, uh, he's a big, well, he was a big hitter, jockey club. I mean, owned half of Gloucestershire, right? Lovely man, by the way, lovely man. Anyway, he said, guys, you do a lot for racing, have my box. So we'd go in and set up a big, big table, and he'd put all these booze. And when I say booze, I'm talking about Dom Palm, Cristal, Pomerol, Margot's, all the good stuff, oh. right? Montrachet's <coughs> for his guests. And his guests are royal family. And, you know, friends of the royal family and all that, landowners. So there's me and Paddy, <laughs> engineer. And the key is, Tuesday, I bring two. Wednesday, he brings two. Thursday, I bring two. Or vice versa. Champagne, bottles of champagne. So eight o'clock, here we go. Welcome to Cheltenham. They were down at the final flight, or the final fence, and we've got Lord Vesey's box, and it's brilliant. Tuesday goes fantastic. Do the show from the box, back to the Guinness tent, up to the coral box. Great. Wednesday goes brilliant. Thursday, I said, Mike, but 22, where's, where's the bubbly on ice? He said, problem out, <coughs> problem out. He said, we've got to go home. He says, what? After the show, we've got to go home. You've got to go home. Can go home. He says, no, we've got to go home. Kelvin's been on. He says, he wants to do the show Friday. She was a gold cup. Got to do the show Friday from London. I went, Pollocks, what's this? It's the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I'm watching the Gold Cup. I've had a bet on the favourite. I'm watching the Gold Cup. We'll watch it in London. I went, no, 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 no. I said, two bottles of bubbly. What are we going to do? I know what we'll do, mate. Get your little arse, your fat arse under that table and grab a couple of Lord Vesties and we'll swap them at 10 o'clock. Well, I can't do that. I said, you can. And I'm not doing the show. Anyway, eventually I talk him in. He's on his hands and he's scurrying under the table. And I'm about to throw to the news at 8 o'clock. Oh, there's none here, I said. Fuck off. There's <laughs> bottles of everything under there. I've seen them put them away. Get under there. Look harder. Right? <coughs> okay, Talk Sport Travel, 8 o'clock, live from Cheltenham, from Lord Vesey's box. Talk Sport, news and headlines with Ian, right? Bang, throw. And as I say that, I just go to look behind the door open. Guy walks in, immaculate. Morning suit, brilliant. And as he walks in, I've just nodded. Paddy comes from under the table and says, look at these fucking two beauties I've got out. These will do, won't they? <laughs> and he's on his knees, he's gone. He made me do it. <laughs> he made me do it, <laughs> your lord, your lord. He made me, and he's on his knees. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I'm pissing myself. He said, he made me do it. We normally bring two. I, in fact, at 10 o'clock, I was going to go and get two be better bottles. Oh, can't get much better than that. And I'm sorry. Guy went, Paddy, get off your fucking knees. Sam Lord bless his valley. I'm his butler. I listen every day. Get up, have <laughs> what you like. <laughs> so we crack on, we do the show. I said, no, what's this nonsense we're going on? Oh, we got to go. We have a blazing argument. <coughs> Lord Vesey's guests start coming. So we got to go. We got to go. They start setting up for all the guests. So we got. I said, "Well, we'll stop arguing." People are watching. I says, "Let's go in the Guinness tent, have a pint, and see how we feel. Talk about it, man to man. You still want to go? You go. I'm not fucking going anywhere." So we go in, and we have more than two or three, right? And eventually, he says, "That's it. I'm going," and off he goes. He said, "You'll be sacked." I went, all right, fuck off. Away goes, right? So I'm thinking, well, she's going to kill me, Jill. I lose my job here. Fucking, maybe I should go. And then I thought, oh, no. This is terrible. I'd never do it now, right? I'm like, oh, no. My fucking car's in the car park. What am I going to do, right? I've had a few pints of Guinness. I thought, I'll go easy, right? Go easy and think about it. <coughs> so I go into the Guinness tent, go to the coral box, Back the winner of the Gold Cup, smash in it, back the next winner. Right, I'm wedged up. And I'm thinking, what do I do? To stick a twist. Do I go home now, save my job, or just fucking brass it and have the day off tomorrow, right? I don't know what to do. And I speak to the coral boy, say, oh, you got to do what you got to do, right? So I said, I know what I'll do, right? I'll, I'm going to go out with the traffic. Before the last race, go nice and easy, find a hotel room, 
15 minutes from here and other villages, pull over, get my head down and leave at 3 in the morning. I can be back at Blackfriars at 3 o'clock Friday morning. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I can do it at that time in the morning. So I'm going through the traffic, through Winchcombe, which is beautiful, ancient capital, where Cromwell's troop marauded through to the Battle of Eastham and all that. Oh, well. Steeped in history. One of the queens is buried there as well, right. Sudley Castle. And then you come to Broadway, keep going now, my favourite. We come to Morton and Marsh, I thought, I'm pulling over. So pull over, little Irish guy, lovely hotel. Mr. Brazil, how are you? I said, I'm fine. I says, do me a favour, save my life, please. Save my life. Have you got a room for tonight? And get me up early, went, no problem. Irish people were over. They paid out the whole week. Second day, they'd done their brains, they've gone. Have their room on us, no problem. I went, uh, oh, keys, give me a bag. I went, no, give me a bag. Give him the bag. Just come with me. I said, you must, I've got to be out here. I've got to be out by three in my car, London, to do the show. No problem. He says, come in here. So I walk in the drawing room, oak panelled, roaring fire. <laughs> Massive chairs around the fire. <sighs> I went, this will do for me. I said, sir, could I get you a nice large Amarone? I went, yeah, lovely. I said, yeah, lovely. <laughs> Heavy as you like. <laughs> so he comes in with a big dollop of red. I'm like, oh, nice. And what happened was my phone, brand new phone, doesn't work, right? Don't know what's up with it, doesn't work, right? And I've got no watch on me. I'm like, fucking hell, come on, get your head together here. Yeah. I said, you will you will get me up. Three o'clock with this, I want to be in my car in two, three minutes, and I'm gone. He went, no problem, so I dole you money. No, 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 no. And as he walks away, fucking worst thing he ever says to me, he says, Mr. Allen, he said, do you remember, do you remember um, Jim Steele? I went, Jim Steele, from Dundee. I went, yeah, you play for Southampton in that great Southampton side, Keegan Shannon. But he said, yeah. I said, why? He said, he's only got the best pub in the village. It's just 50 yards down there on the right. <laughs> now, that's the fucking worst thing you want to hear in your life. Isn't it? <laughs> it's the worst thing you want anyone to tell you. <laughs> I'm just finishing off this Amarone. Really? I went, how far down on the right? <laughs> They go in, 17th of March, Paddy's Day. I always remember. He's behind the bar, Steely, right? Do you remember? You probably yeah, remember. Yeah, I remember that With a ranger strip on. And I'm like, hey, Blue Nose. I'm hiding behind a pillar. Hey, Blue Nose, give us a pint of Guinness on St. Patrick's Day. And he's like, well, who's saying that, right? And now the punters are coming back from Cheltenham. Anyway, he comes over. Oh, fucking hell, it's you, Brazil. What are you doing? Anyway, big hugs and all that. Edit me. <clears throat> Cut along so short. The next morning. You know when you wake up, you think, fucking hell. Where am I? Uh, what have I done? What's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it suddenly comes to me, fucking hell, boom, up. <coughs> gear on. Whew. He's there with my bag and my keys. I fucking, I went, oi. I said, what are you doing to me? And I looked, there's a grandfather clock. Fucking hell. Ten past four on the clock. What are you doing to me? I said three o'clock. He says, sir, you never come in to 3.40. <laughs> oh, fuck. I went, oh, mate. I, says, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I thought, fucking hell, give me a coffee. So I have a coffee. I went, fuck, I'm going to just slow drive back. I knew then. Stuffed. I knew. Done. Drove back. Got to Cheapside over the road. City. Fucking phone, don't work, brand new phone. I'm sorry, sir, we've we'll had a few problems. New phone, put the SIM card in, battery, beep, 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 fucking hell, it's gone mental. So I put Michelle, my oldest, hi, darling, you all right? Oh, daddy, you all right? I said, I'm fine, I'm back in London. Not good, dad, mum, mum, don't go home, she's going to kill you. What do you mean? This is a bike on its way, Kel McKenzie sent a cooler, you're sacked, you've lost your job. I went, okay, dad, I went, calm down, calm down. You've got a day off, haven't you? Can you get a couple of days off? Why? Yeah. I said, where's the skis? I went, what? Where's the skis? Have you got any warm gear? Yeah. He was living in London. I said, yeah, where's your sister? She got any? Yeah, I think so. I said, right, grab it and get over to mine. And before we know it, down the A2, we're heading to the Channel Tunnel. What's the point? You're going to get a bollock in. Fuck it. Uh -huh. Down the Channel Tunnel, through the tunnel. Bosh, here we go. 
the Valley's merry bell. <laughs> <laughs> Paris phoned me to tell me the bad news. Fuck off. Not talking to him. Have you never answered that? No. <laughs> no. So we get down to France that night, book in the hotel, no problem. Three foot of snow, blue sky. Done it. Not a care in the world. So he's trying me a couple of times the next day. Fuck off. Not talking to him. Lost my job. Had it been announced on the radio that you'd lost your job at this point? Pardon? Had it been announced on the radio that you'd no, lost no, your no, job? No, 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 no. When did that come out? And that came out on the Tuesday, I think. Monday, Tuesday. Because he kept trying me all weekend, I wouldn't answer. And then I wouldn't answer Jill's calls, I got my shell to do it. Speak to your mum, tell her, leave me alone, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then Monday, late at night when I'm having dinner, he calls me he, and I pick up the phone. He, I'll, I'll, don't put the phone down. What do you want, you snake? <laughs> Yeah, did you get a rise, did you, you snake? He says, no, 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 no. He says, look, can I speak to you tomorrow? I think Kelvin's coming round. He says, what to what? Your job back. I went, oh, hold on a minute. What's going on? He says, look, I've got a, I've got a couple of people in the crap. I've got 4,000 texts and emails here. People are tuning in. They're, they're not listening. Well, you think about it? I went, fuck off. Put the phone down. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> so Tuesday, I'm now coming. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to have it back. And Tuesday, I'm thinking, when did I pick up his call? So eventually I do, midday, I'm up the mountain, little restaurant there, skiing away, brilliant. Gorgeous, oh, stunning. And he says, oh, it's Mike, play. I says, what? I said, I'll come back, but you got to leave me alone. I was out of order, I'll apologise to Kelvin. I was out of order, but leave me alone, okay? He says, when do you want me back? He says, Monday, come back Friday, and I'll see you Monday. He says, Thank you. I went, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're getting one thing, no. You come back, coming back Friday, Saturday, I'll see you Monday. No, are we, how many emails was I? He said, lot. I said, are we talking a little rise here? <laughs> he says, you're taking the fucking piss. I went, no, I'm not. Call me back. Put the phone down. I got a rise. That's incredible. Did you ever speak to Ke Have you ever spoken to Boy McKenzie? Not about that, no. No, no, no. And did, did he leave? No, uh, yeah, he's gone now. Oh, no. He sold out for a hundred odd mil. Wow. The UTV and who have now sold out to um, uh, Mr. Murdoch. How did that, how was that feeling knowing that you had so much public support? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I had a friend who was going to get the taxis to drive outside and beep 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 beep. I'm like, no, 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 no. But I was very lucky then. I wouldn't do that now. No chance. Yeah. No, no, no. What do you think it was about you that people relate to you so much? I think I'm just honest and, you know, and common sense. I keep going back to that word common sense. I think I'm just honest and I see how it is. Yeah. How many more years do you think you'll do this? I've got one more year left. Less than a year. But I say that every... I've been saying that for the last five or six. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just the last few bit on McCoy, uh, like you said. So, did you? W when did you decide it would be a good idea to get Ali McCoy involved? Oh, you, I, you know, I you think I, Ali had come on a couple of times. So you got to get him involved. He come on just as a punter. So you got to get him on. He's brilliant. He's bubbly. He's fantastic. We're both glad. Well, he's not Glasgow. He's Scotland. Right, uh, posh. He's uh, posh but, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I said, you got to get Ali on. And um, we had a chat, and he said, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love it. So, but obviously, Ali, and since Ali's come on. He's suddenly, you know, people realise how good he is and how bubbly he is and, you know, he's just a great guy to listen to. Yeah. He's landed all these different jobs now. Incredible, isn't it? Don't forget Laura, Laura Woods. Used she's to do my, done very well. She used to do my papers and I looked at them, I said, are you mad? She's too good for this. When did you realise she was really good? After a she, week. Was that right? After one week, I said, she's too good for this. Uh -huh. Did you and Ali hit it off straight away? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever watched the Celtic Rangers game together? No, no. You must no. be delighted at how things are between Celtic and Rangers, knowing that you're on the radio. They're gonna. Um, yeah, but it's fr we we have we have friendly banter, but when that game starts, we we should be separate because he's got that feeling in his in his in his veins, and I've got the feeling still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even though I never played for Celtic. So you've never lost that, now? Huh? You've never lost that feeling for Celtic. Never. Never, no. Not in an old firm game. Yeah. I need to ask you as well because I love him so much. Your uh, your reaction to Ange Postacoglu getting the job? I never heard of him, right? And what? I played against him. Did you, right? Played against him for Wollongong against a Wollongong South Melbourne. Hi. Someone sent me a postcard. Uh, a postcard. They sent me um, a programme. 
And I looked. I played against him. Wow. Never heard of him. Didn't know what he'd done. But he came over, and it's a joke now, isn't it? But he's done brilliant. And if he's, he's had the hard time at Spurs, but so what? You know, it's not easy at Spurs, Man United. He was fantastic for Celtic. Uh, last thing, we'd love to get you back up to Glasgow for a pint. If you were coming back to Glasgow, what would be your drink of choice? Um, Is that a tenant? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of wine at the moment. Still right. Yeah, but I might have a Guinness, I might have a pint, depends. But when I get home, and I've got to get home soon um, because it's been too long. And, um, I, you know, when I get there, it's fantastic. Really is. I get carried away a wee bit, you know. I get yeah. a bit emotional. I do, you know, and uh, I nearly get arrested at Glasgow Airport after an old film game range of beaters. Oh, these, these jobs give me a load of stick at the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I lost the plot a little bit. I was, my brother was over from Australia. I was in Heritage Bar on the south side. And we got beat. Celtic never turned up. It was Ibrox. And uh, the bar, and they, were, they were all like Millwall, Chelsea and all that mob, you know. And in the end, the guy sitting next to me, so you got to sell this guy, give us it. He went, no, no, leave them, ignore them. I said, ignore them, you joke. And it could, it could have gone a bit nasty. And then two <sighs> coppers just come over and grabbed me and said, Alan, time to go. I'll put you on the plane. That's why we love you, Alan Brazil. What a man. Thanks so much, mate. Hero up. <laughs>